Hey! How's it going, everyone? Welcome back. Good to see you all. Let me catch you up, see who's here. Shin Lane, good to see you. MJ, Vlad, of course. Corsair, Portable, Rhombus, Adam. Hot Moms, Cool Man, how's it going? Rich, Kaido Kid, Poxy, Dim. Welcome back, everyone. What's up? I was just watching your VOD to catch up. Love the Bloodborne playthroughs. I have a YouTube channel now as well for, um, for all my archived streams. Um, just so you know, it tends to be easier to watch VODs on YouTube than it is on Twitch's player. Having to awkwardly go through all those menus and everything as well. Let me just uh, link that. Actually, that's my other one. You can follow that one as well, but that second one that I just linked, that's the archive channel. Kumori has been doing a great job uploading all my recent VODs as well. I think both of the uh, Bloodborne streams are up there. There's like 50, over 50 playlists there as well of a load of other playthroughs. But yeah, let's uh, let's get back into it. I'm on a little bit earlier today. I uh, I woke up earlier than expected. My sleep schedule is all over the place. What's the oldest VOD that I have? Um, well, I don't know. I don't know. I don't have two. I don't think I have any before like 2017. Yeah, I don't think I have anything saved before 2017. Maybe I have something from 2016. I think I do actually have a couple from 2016. I think I might have like one or two. No, I think 2016 is the oldest. That channel has videos now. Not my first YouTube channel, my second one. I have two YouTube channels. One for archived streams and another for... I'm not sure. The secondary channel is packed with videos. Hundreds and hundreds. Hey, what's up, Ghostronaut? Uh, MJ, thank you for the 13 months. Watched the last VOD myself. My god, the ritual song in Yahar Ghoul is immense. So good. One of my favorite parts of the game. <clears throat> okay. Let's get the show on the road. One second.
Um, Shin Lane, has there been a true next-gen game you've played on a PS5 yet? Um, a game that made you go, oh, shit, that's next level. I'm um, not really, I guess. I don't really ever expect there to to be one. Like in, I, like I feel like nowadays we just get like very gradual increases when it comes to the improvement of tech and whatnot. You know, did I feel that way about any game last generation going from PS3 to PS4 or something like that? You know, going from. 2D to 3D was crazy. Going from PS1 to PS2 was crazy. Um, but I'm sure I'll still be impressed. You know, like, like, it, like graphically, I guess Red Dead Redemption 2 was uh, ex was extremely impressive graphically. Uh, well, more than graphically, but um. Yeah, I remember being very impressed by RDR2, visually. I really enjoyed uh, Returnal, yeah. But not in the sense of like, oh wow, like behold the power of the PS5, you know, not in that kind of way. <laughs> really enjoyed it though, uh, for sure. But yeah, those environments in, uh, in RDR2 were pretty damn impressive. Gorgeous. Um, Guig, thank you for the 54 months as well. Returnal is a PS5 exclusive, yeah. A snake may cry with the two months as well, thank you. Old Jolly Roger, what's up, the balloon? If I didn't say hi, hope you're all keeping well. I didn't even say behold the power of the PS5 once when I played it. No, still managed to enjoy it though somehow. This is something that changes after Vicar Amelia, isn't it? The clouds get redder here. We have this red shade. This wasn't here before. The black clouds. Dave pointed out something yesterday that I forgot about as well. Uh, but before the, the clouds change here, even at the, the very start of the game, if you look all the way up there. Oh yeah, look. Yeah, look at that shit. That's, that's very red. <laughs> you can still notice the difference. I forgot completely about that. Look at those clouds all the way up there. Those bloody clouds. Cool. But yeah, I don't think these clouds are here at the start. I think these only appear after Amelia. I could be wrong, though. I thought it only changed after Rom. No, I don't think so. I think it changes after Amelia and then Rom. I could be wrong, though. I could very well be wrong. But I don't think these red, dark clouds are here at the start of the game. I think it's quite clear in comparison, but maybe not. Um, since we're starting so early, I thought maybe we could do some... Uh, chalice dungeons. Or one. One chalice dungeon at least. Before we um, continue on with the main story. Just because I'm starting so early and a lot of people will probably be expecting me to start later. They'll, they might be a little bit disappointed if I'm so far ahead when they, when they have the chance to join the stream. <clears throat> The giant trees and pillars are internally called shrines. 
And according to an early leak that got a lot of information right, players would upgrade themselves at their shrine. So it might be correct that there's supposed to be other hunters' dreams. That was one of the theories, that they these were like other dreams. That they symbolized other dreams in a way. Yeah, I never really had any theory for what they could be. But it's certainly a nice visual. And quite mysterious, the, uh, the flowing mountains of water as well. Really interesting. Hey, what's up, Fatepi? Elden Ring will be co-op? I, I have no idea. But I would say, I would say so if like if it has online op if it has the same online options as the Souls games, you know you can play co-op in this game. You can play co-op in the Souls game. So it's uh, probably also a thing in, uh, in Elden Ring as well. Uh, yeah, let's venture into one of the um, one of the Chalice dungeons then. Not the most exciting stuff in the world, but I'm kind of keen to take a look at them again. It's been a while, you know? Love all the different versions of the, uh, the Hunter's Mark that you see. First Ritual Altar. Um, do I have all the materials, I wonder? A short ritual root chalice is required to conduct a ritual. I don't have a... Uh, oh, yeah, this is for, like, the uh, the thingamajig chalices. Uh, use the ritual altar to create a chalice dungeon with a chalice ritual. Or to search for chalice dungeons created by hunters in other worlds. Chalice ritual. Tumeru Chalice. Ritual Chalice found in the Church of the Good Chalice. Used in a ritual at the Tomb Altar in the Hunter's Dream to break the seal of the old underground labyrinth. Let the Chalice reveal the Tomb of the Gods. Let blood be the Hunter's nourishment. And let ye partake in communion. I think uh, you were theorizing before, Cool Man, that... Um, that before you were going to access the chalice dungeons from this place or that like in an early in some early footage you could see that there was stuff to access from this statue here that this statue was like more significant mechanically like it was going to lead to a dungeon or something like that did i try mortal shell i did and i really didn't like it unfortunately um i played it for a few hours and um, that was about it Uh, I thought that that hardening mechanic was pretty cool, though. You know, where you could, like, freeze whenever you wanted mid-animation. That felt kind of cool. But yeah, I, I never really played that much of it. Um, okay. Let's conduct the ritual. All we need is ritual blood. This basic-ass dungeon. And a thousand blood echoes. Uh, the ritual is finished and a chalice rests upon the altar. You may now explore the dungeon. Hmm. Do I want to level up? Welcome home, good hunter. What is it you... I thought you were going to access the chalices from locations in the world, like the Church of the Good Chalice is probably where you would have entered. Push back the altar or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think you would have created the dungeons themselves in the Chamber of the Seal, which is now useless. There's even a space for the ritual in that room. Okay. Very well. Uh, I have one level here. 
Yeah, I'll go for a bit more skill. Farewell, good hunter. May you find your worth in the waking world. Yeah, I just thought, um, I remember I just got to one area in Mortal Shell and it was just felt really dull. Just got just some of that level design dealing with those enemies and uh, characters that just felt like souls parodies. You know, like the, the firekeeper stand-in woman with her mask. And whatever you were called, you know, the hollow stand-in, whatever your name was in that, I forget. I think just souls likes. I just don't think they're really my my jam. Um. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if I d if I thought it was like a terrible game or anything. I don't think I did. It just wasn't my thing, you know. A lot of it felt pretty derivative. <clears throat> a Hollow Knight is very. Like, maybe, maybe in terms of world and story, you could compare it a bit to Souls. But not so much mechanically. You know, it'd be more comparable to other 2D Metroidvanias, stuff like that. Yeah, look at the, the statues here. The same one in the Hunter's Dream. I guess that's where that theory might have uh, came from. Come from. Hey, I remember this. I remember going through these copy-pasted hallways five million times. Oh, the memories. <laughs> Hello. Yeah, we're probably going to destroy this dungeon. We could have done this a long time ago. You know, after Blood Starved Beast, we've gained a lot of level since then, so. Probably isn't going to be too bad. Ooh, hello. These guys are Tumerians, aren't they? These are like the, uh, the base level Tumerians. But he's going to... Oh, fuck you, man. <laughs> Ooh, the oily water here. Yeah, there is some cool shit in the dungeons. Like, I like the concept of it. Um, but yeah, at the same time, a lot of it can be pretty repetitive. But cool that there's some unique boss fights, some new enemies, interesting looking enemies as well, some cool lore. It's just a shame there there isn't more variety, you know, in terms of the dungeons themselves, the layouts. I think I only ever completed the, dun the dungeons one time. Getting to fight Queen Yarnum at the very end. Really cool. I mean, those vials. T 
too old for platforming, Jolly Roger, yeah. I enjoyed Hollow Knight. A lot of people really swear by Hollow Knight. They, like, it has, uh, a lot of people really loved it. I had a good time with it, I, but I wasn't, like, uh, crazy crazy about it. But I enjoyed it enough to play it all the way through, or th through the main story, anyway. Some good vibes, fun bosses. I really like that mechanic. Oh, Jesus! Oh, I got poisoned by that. Fuck you. I like the, uh, I don't even know what you'd call it, but that like experience system in Hollow Knight where you could either spend your experience to heal or to use special abilities. That, uh, that trade-off was really fun. Just playing around with that. Ooh! Ah, yes, now I remember. The bell ringer. The bell ringer is summoning these red boys. Fuck you. You look interesting. AJ with the 41 months. Thank you. I played Shovel Knight as well. I never did finish Shovel Knight though. Oh god, yeah, these boys. Uh, hold on, I wanted to read someone's comment there. Silent Hill. What games made you go crazy, crazy? Crazy, crazy? What, like, what games did I, like, really get into? I'm not really sure what you mean. <laughs> just the way you just, like, asking about my favorite games? Well, obviously, uh, the MGS series, Bloodborne. Classic Silent Hill. Darkwood would be one of the more recent games that I really, really loved. One of my favorites from recent years. Yeah! You said you liked Hollow Knight but wasn't crazy. Yeah, well, I, ju I just mean that I, like, wasn't, like, uh, like, super in love with the game. That I, like, I really enjoyed it, but, um... Compared to how other people reacted to it, I was like, oh, yeah, yeah I like that. Because, uh, you know, there, there was the game was getting, a, like, a lot of heavy praise. And while I really did enjoy it, I wasn't uh, that mad about it. Oh! Looks like there's some pretty um, tough optional bosses in uh, Hollow Knight. Or like the DLC bosses. I remember watching some streams. There were some crazy fights that I never did. I think it must have been DLC. Maybe I'll go back to it at some point. Ooh. Okay, let's uh, operate this device. Somewhere, a door to the old labyrinth has opened. Oh yeah, the incense burners that you see all over the place here. 
Um, did we get any new interesting items there? Ritual Blood 2. One of the basic ingredients used to satiate a holy chalice is this incoagulable blood. When all is melted in blood, all is reborn. Okay, we have to go back somewhere. Oh, hello. Um... I guess I'm gonna drop down here. See what's going on. Ooh. A snatcher. ba 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 da 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 Molotov. Hello? Oh, yeah. <laughs> come on, come at me. Okay. I... Anything else in this room? Oh, here's something. Quicksilver bullets. <laughs> These chalice dungeons, they sure are exciting. I've never been so enthralled by Bloodborne in all my life. Ooh. Okay, we're back out here. And the door that we opened should be somewhere back here, I think. Or at the end here. Something tells me I'm not going to want to do another Chalice Dungeon after this first one. <laughs> um, shit, where do I have to go all the way back again? Forgetting how these work. That's where... That's where we went. Ooh, wait, hold on. Okay, back up here. I think these boring ass dungeons could have easily been saved if they had more interesting modifiers and you had to start them naked and find randomized weapons and armors. Like if they turned it into like a roguelike kind of thing. Yeah, that could have been really sick. I think that's what they're doing uh, with the new Hitman um, update. Where the f ah? Where? Oh, where is where's the door? It's not up here, is it? No, it's not. We have to go back. But I'm dropping down again. Uh, there's definitely nothing else here. Yeah, I'm keen to see the new Hitman update. Hopefully it's good. I know some fans were unhappy with the um, 
the Hitman 3 content so far. Like, the Seven Deadly Sins content apparently is, like, really not so great. It's a bit of a cash grab. I haven't played it myself, but I, um, I read some complaints. Um, right, okay, we're, we're going all the way back out then. Starting off with greed for the DLC, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was the first one they released. The first seven, the first deadly sin, greed. Um, okay, here we go. Back out this way. Christ. Wait, no, this is just the starting area. Oh, game. Game, don't do this to me. I feel like I should really remember how this works. There's the f there's the the door. Okay. So there's two places to climb on this side. There's that ladder and then there's the Right, I thought there was only one platform. Here we go. Um, the way of heaven. Thank you for the sub and the, for, the, for the six months in advance. Thank you. Oh, yeah, no, feel free to backseat. Yeah, no, no, yeah, yeah. When I'm going through chalice dungeons, if I'm just looking for the way to go, yeah, I really don't give any shits. All right, boss time. That was lovely. This guy. <laughs> kind of a cool design. Who, who, who lit those candles on his back? What kind of fucked up Tumerian ritual is this? Oh, Jesus. Yeah, we're, uh, we're over level for this place. Another one? Click dodge there. Whoop. Ah. Yeah, use some range. He's bleeding now. Easy. Adept. Jim. Okay, next layer. The other version of this guy fucked me up. I think I know who you're talking about. There's some rough bosses down here. Remember the amygdala gave a lot of people trouble. The cursed amygdala in that tiny room. With all the range. Um, I forgot to open my stream lab. Hold on. Okay, let's keep going. Oh god, I forgot we had to do layers of this place. Uh, just, it's three layers, isn't it? <laughs> I already, I already want to leave. Uh, let's take out that torch.
Hey, Ultimate Rio, thank you. That's not so bad. Okay, here is the door. I need to remember. That's This is where we need to come back to when we find our next switch. Oh! Can we assume that all the poison in this game is the same type of poison? Like the, the ashen blood, assuming that that poison effect in the old Yarnum is ashen blood. The type of blood that those monsters exude, the blood starved beast. I don't think so, it's just a generic category, right. Yeah, because I, I guess, like, the uh, the poison knife poisons you, and it's clear that the poison knife isn't, like, slathered in ashen blood or whatever. Yeah, that's kind of obvious, really. Uh, where am I going here? Okay, exciting room. Two poison categories. There are two different poison statuses in the game. I don't remember that. I'm probably forgetting something. Oh. Oh, just with regards to, like, slow and rapid build of poison? Okay. I like, uh, I like this color. Oh! Uh, there is probably a bell ringer in here. Get out of my way. Where is she? Yeah, I can hear her. Hey, what's up, Kaga Beat? How's it going? Yeah, there's no way I'm doing another chalice after this. This will be long enough anyway. It takes a while to go through one of them, especially when you're um, out of practice with them. Where are you, woman? She's probably down there. No, she's probably lurking about up here. Or in here. Here we go. Yeah. Hello. Nice. And they all drop. Oh. I don't remember fighting, um, Cursed Amygdala for some reason. I think maybe, maybe it wasn't too bad for me because I just had so much practice with Amygdala in, like, outside of the dungeons. Like, I think I, I maybe I just knew the Amygdala fight so well. That was a fight that I really did play a lot in the main game. You know, doing BL4 challenges playing on NG7. Oh! 
Although maybe I did struggle with it as well in the dungeons. I, I just can't remember, you know. Ooh! <laughs> I like how these guys look. Very shiny. Look at that natural sheen he has. He doesn't look oiled up or anything. He just looks naturally shiny. <laughs> Fuck you. Oh, the strats. Okay. Wow, he means business. Um, how does he feel about Molotovs? Oh my god. Yeah, not dealing with this guy too well. Jesus Christ, okay. Yeah, roll into me again. Ugh, Jesus. <laughs> oh! How did he even pull that off? The roll into the body slam there. The roll into the back slam. <laughs> what a cool enemy. Okay. Can we open that door? Let's go back. I like that guy. Um, anything else to do in here? There's a place to drop down here? I'm dropping down. What's going on in here? I was probably already in here. There's illusory walls and shit in these dungeons as well. And, like, you can predict where they're going to appear. Jesus. Oh yeah, and a secret enemy inside the the coffin there that we opened up. Uh, did I get the creators loving their creations dialogue from the doll yet? No, not yet. I didn't I didn't do any of the post Amelia dialogue or anything yet. Didn't even pick up the uh, the eye of the blood drunk hunter. Didn't talk to Ariana or any of the any of the cathedral ward people. Um okay, I'm scared. Oh, that guy and his little gun. The big boy with the little gun. Kind of in the mood to, to cheese one of these guys. Jesus. A big delay on that. Yeah. I, I remember the bosses from the main game really well. Like a lot of them, their patterns and everything. These guys, no clue what they're going to do. Fuck it. follow-up, okay. You're trying to flank me there. That range on the whip is nice.
Wait. Ho! Ooh, okay, he's putting his gun away now. Tumeru Root Chalice. Is, uh, oh, is that the, is, is there, are there only two layers to this one? Because usually you get the chalice at the very end, right? Oh, wait, no, there's one more. I think. Yeah, one more. Okay, let's go back to the dream. Stock up. I'm playing on PS5, Laguna, yeah. <laughs> You're gonna invade me? Yeah, I'll probably do my first playthrough online. See how it goes, just to take a look at the features. I'm not, obviously, you know, I'm not much of an online player when it comes to these games, but I'll probably take a look. Um, okay. How are we doing on Vile? <laughs> 81 stored. <laughs> Layer 2. What do I think of, uh, of uh, the PS5 so far? I haven't played too many um, games on it yet. Only Returnal, really, which I really did enjoy. So, yeah, I guess not much so far, given the amount of games I played and the amount of games that are uh, available. I played a bit of Ratchet, which I had fun with. But I'm not sure if I'll go back to it. Yeah, Returnal is cool. Uh, will I try God of War Ragnarok? I probably will, yeah. I would say so. I might even take a look at the New Horizon, even though I wasn't... Um, even though I never got into the first one. Hope. Oh. Yeah, I still need to go back and get the uh, the final ending of Returnal. But yeah, it was really fun streaming that. Very intense. Okay, the final layer. Oh, hey, yeah, yeah, I forgot about this little detail. When we pull the levers to open up these gates. These lanterns light up. And we can see here the, the messengers are guarding them. Okay, let's drop. Uh, was there someone up there? Jesus, there you are. Yeah, I hear Horizon is certainly very impressive in terms of the environments, the visuals. I know the, the previous game was as well. Oh, Jesus Christ. Okay, that's some damage. I remember this room.
Okay, let's find this bell ringing bitch. There you are. Cool man. Write me an essay in chat about these flowers, will you? I want to know all about them. Give me all you got. <laughs> I think there must be another... Uh, I think there must be another bell ringing girl around here. Maybe not. Oh! I always love the little flower theme of this game. Especially when you get to the DLC and you really learn about the Lumen flowers and the emissaries using them as a medium to communicate with the cosmos and all of that. Really cool. One sec, guys. Um, that where's that centipede thing? Yeah, there. The the the, the Christmas tree centipede with this lovely little star hanging off his head. Okay, let's go down and fight him. I'm probably gonna die. Oh, oh, Jesus! There's two of them over there as well, I think. Oh, Christ. Uh, oh, and uh, a Snatcher as well. Lovely. Uh, let's try and take him out first. <laughs> that completely useless attack that they have. Maybe it, they can fuck you up if there's another enemy around. Like it can attack you while you're getting pulled. But pretty useless. Oh. Jeez. Oh. And of course I didn't have my thing. You don't have much health. Come on. Ooh. Oh, hold up. This was always my strat for these guys. Just get stuck in their legs and start whipping like crazy. <laughs> so vintage FromSoft combat. Uh, where's the star? Usually when those guys despawn like that, they leave their star behind, don't they? Maybe not all of them do that. I guess they all, I guess they don't all do that. These flowers in particular don't have that much going for them, but the flower theme is enormous because often in Shinto natural things are objects of worship and divinity. In DS3 the curse rotted great wood is kind of an inversion of that. In Bloodborne most of the higher order creatures are tree-like or plant-like. Yeah. Often tentacles even look like tree roots, like on the amygdalans. The old one is a big tree monster. Yeah, it's certainly a big uh, theme throughout all their games. Yeah, I'm just being reminded of the Garden of Eyes enemy now in Bergenworth. 
Really creepy. And of course, Master Willem with his staff, which looks like a, which looks like a plant as well. Those seeds coming out the top. Oh, fuck off. Really looks like the uh, the blue elixir substance. Hey, he left the star behind, or the parasite behind. Arcane haze. I guess that substance that's coming out of them is supposed to be arcane haze. Liquefied haze. Do you only get to pick up arcane haze from them when they drop the parasite here? I guess it's just random whether this gets dropped or not. Arcane haze. Material used in a holy chalice ritual. The tiny smatterings of haze that are found in certain ritual materials, sometimes required for special rites. The additional right sinister bell makes the bell ringing woman appear, and when she rings a sinister bell, hunters from other worlds will be beckoned as adversaries. Hemp mind, how's it going? Smoke some haze. Okay, where am I going? Uh, there's another uh, centipede Christmas tree over there, I think, or something. Wandering mad. You'll find that once you're done fighting Rom, the flowers in the hunter's dream begin to glow. I remember that now. That's bringing back some memories. There's a lot of, um, there's a lot of that flowers absorbing moonlight stuff throughout the game. Yeah, in particular with the lumen flowers that are kind of reverse sunflowers that are supposed to come out at night and absorb the light of the moon for arcane. Willem is doing much the same thing in his Lunarium, right? Okay. Yeah, I remember the, uh, the like, the Lumenwood Garden being different between the Old Hunters DLC and the main game. I remember finding that interesting. You know, like, in, I think in the, in the main game, they're closed. But in the, in the DLC, they're open. Or something like that. I guess they look very different in the DLC, you know, they're being tended to by the, by the patients. Your cope for why the flowers are closed in the main game is because it's a red moon. Ooh, hello. Isn't this creature a, a rare enemy to see down here? You can hear the uh, the cane when it when it uh, hits the ground. What's this guy called? Is this the DLC? No, this is the these are the chalice dungeons. They're the procedurally generated content in the game. Generally considered the worst part of the game. 
We won't be doing all this stuff, though. All this stuff is completely optional. Ooh. He still gives me another chance. He does he really doesn't want to fight back, this guy. Oh, I'm sorry, man. Uh, he only it looks like he only attacks once when I attack him. Oh, the crying as well. <laughs> Ooh. Big on the mercury, this fella. He does look he does look very mercury-ish, doesn't he? Looks like he could be composed of the stuff. That intense white glow. Uh Ghostwire. Jolly Roger. Yeah, I think I will check out Ghostwire. I like, um... I like Mikami and his studio and what he's trying to do. I'd like to, I'd like to support them. And, uh, it does look intriguing as well. Mercurial. That's the, that's the word. The little pendant is a caduceus if you look really close. I didn't even notice the uh, the pendant, or if I did, I just wasn't really thinking about it. I'm really keen to play that new game by uh, Keichiro Toyama as well, the Silent Hill creator. It was that trailer that um, they put out a bit ago. Hopefully that turns out well. Looks like it's going to be some kind of horror action hybrid. Oh, fuck you, man. Oh. I Psycho Omega with the three months. Thank you. Slitterhead, that's what it's called. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely keen to see more of that. Any of you guys ever play Gravity Rush? I think those are the last games that Toyama directed. Gravity Rush 1 and 2. The, uh, the Slitterhead demo kind of gave me... I know, Like, I never played Gravity Rush, but watching that Slitterhead demo, it kind of reminded me of what I saw of that game. Like, just in terms of style. And it's, it's obviously more horror-esque than those games, but... I don't know, just something about the colors or something. I might be way off, though, because I've only seen bits and pieces of Gravity Rush. Pretty great Vita games, yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't mind checking them out sometime. Hey, what's up, Nico? Uh, any illusory walls? No? Uh, oh, right, I already opened it. Okay, let's go back. I think we're about to fight our last boss here. I probably missed an area or two, but who gives a shit? Let's just go back. Uh, 
In these rooms, if you kill an enemy with a visceral attack, then leave the room and come back, one of those enemies from Kanehurst can appear sometimes. And they drop gems. That's interesting, and it's dependent on whether you visceral attack an enemy in the room. Weird. Is that in the, the Loran dungeons? Oh, the blood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's bringing back some memories now. The blood liquors. Yeah. Prospector Olic. Hey. Yeah, and at the end of each dungeon, there's always this side room. Uh, I'm remembering stuff. This is where you get all the all the goodies. Hello. That's the reasoning, but that's the reasoning for it. Yeah, you use a visceral attack that sprays blood all over the place, and the blood lickers come in to lick up all the blood. Really cool. And of course, that's why you, that's why they're there in Kanehurst as well, because of it's supposed to give you a uh, imply something about the uh, the war there, all the people that died. Those blood lickers are still around after the aftermath. Uh, let's drop down. Oh! And they're all over the River of Blood in the Hunter's Nightmare. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For, I forgot about that. That's really cool, though, having them drop in based off a visceral attack. That's a really clever way of uh, utilizing them. It's a shame they didn't do more with the Chalice Dungeons. They could have been really cool. Um, okay. Hey, what's up, JMP? Anything else in this room? I think it's these side areas that usually have the illusory walls. These final areas. Yeah, Hagley, we were talking earlier, like, maybe if the if the Chalice Dungeons had, like, a roguelike thing going on, it could have been interesting. You know, like, if you had to go through them with various handicaps and um, stuff like that. Where you were forced to, like, maybe pick up weapons that you could drop your weapons and find weapons that you could lose permanently and shit like that. If you look at the supplementary stuff, a lot of uh, a lot of Tumerian society was more like a civilization of grave keepers. That makes sense with how they look. The traps and things that are here to keep people out. The doll dialogue coming up will be a good time to detail it a bit more. Okay. Uh, did I search that area thoroughly? I feel like I really did. Yeah, that's the issue with them. They're just way too repetitive. You're just going through so many of the same levels again and again. With not and with not enough variety. I mean, like there is there's there's some cool things, you know? It's really cool seeing all these unique enemies down here. Some really cool designs. 
some cool bosses. But still lacking for sure. JMP, thank you for gifting a sub to Cougar. Yeah, I never came through here. <laughs> this guy's having a hard time. <laughs> oh, yes. Show me the moves. This guy just wants to dance. He doesn't want to fight. <laughs> okay, let's finish him. I'm sorry. I should have left him. Should have left him be. Uh, cool, man. What are you uh, talking about now? I think it's so lame that you never find a gigantic coffin like the one you find in the Cathedral of the Deep. The Great Ones are supposed to be slumbering in here, but you don't ever see anything like that. Yeah, yeah, I guess there's a like a... a conflict between how these areas are described and how they actually feel to, to go through. I mean, I guess as you go through, you do learn more about there. There, you know, there is some mystery to it with some of all the new items you find, and the great is chalice. I remember the like the aesthetic can be pretty cool in some of the later chalices, but yeah, it would have been cool to have some unique stuff like that. Um, the mold. Lovely. Bit of tomb mold. Mold that grows from rotten flesh and blood inside the old labyrinth. Matures to bear giant spores. I do like the idea of, uh, you know, how you, how you create the new chalices by finding all these crazy materials. The materials are pretty cool. All the different types and some of the weird descriptions that they have. Um... Hello. Um, let's take a look over here. Great ones are kind of dubious when you consider that the sacrifices they ask for are people's organs and eyeballs and shit. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh... And fetuses. The red jelly. The red jelly is nasty. Okay, what goodies do we have? Ritual blood. Not too exciting. But still precious. Can't wait for Gran Turismo 7, J2M, yeah. I'm, ass I'm assuming that's what GT7 is. Oh. F 
forgot how long these dungeons are. Oh! I just want to get out of here now. Nice. Okay, let's... Where am I going? Okay, last boss. What's it going to be? Oh, no. Watchdog. I don't remember this guy's patterns at all. Here we go. This might be tough. Ooh, okay. Take it easy. Ba ba ba. Christ. How did that miss? First time in the whole fight that I tried to dodge into him and I get punished. Like, fuck it, fuck backing away from him. Let's just try and dodge through him and get some attacks in. Nope. I was kind of sick of going all defensive there. <laughs> what a bitch. Okay. Badam, 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 badam. Ba -ba -bum, ba -ba -bum. Uh, let me scroll up and uh, see what you're saying here, cool man. This gigantic guard dog watches over the underground ruins, covered in a petrified body hard as stone, clad in a rich cloud of flames and left directly by the inhuman inhabitants slumbering in the ruins. These special guards are said to be enveloped in these dense flames in order to better carry out their duties through the ages. Bestiary description. It's a shame we didn't get uh, some of those descriptions in the game. Okay, I would need my echo.
ba ba ba. What happened there? That's like a weird stagger. Oh! Right, okay. Trying to be a little bit more aggressive this time. a really good moment to get in and do some damage, but I missed my opportunity. Ba -da -da. Playing it very safe here. Jesus Christ, okay. Oh, fuck off. I'm alive. Fuck it. Topping up just in case. Nice hit there. Ba ba ba. Slow and steady at the end there. Okay. Let's take a look at that chalice that we got. Central to Meru Chalice. A chalice that breaks a labyrinth seal, but only a root chalice changes the shape of the old labyrinth when used in a ritual. The old labyrinth was carved out by the Tumerians, superhuman beings that are said to have unlocked the wisdom of the Eldritch Truth. Eugene with the 14 months. Thank you very much. Hey, Listo. How's it going, man? Ba -da -ba -da. Okay. This reading is accessible in English in English as well, but Eldritch Truth just means the world beyond humanity, the arcane, not like a specific fact. That was definitely something that a lot of people thought it was for a good while. I think even I did. That like it was referring to like a, a particular event or something that happened or... Like a certain thing, certain fact. Okay, let's take a look at these blood gems. We were picking up quite a few blood gems. Ooh.
physical attack up 10.5%. Nine percent, seven point three physical up at full HP plus two point seven. Go for that one. Drifted off. What is it you desire? Um, let's Very level up. Well, let the echoes become your strength. Let me stand close. Now shut your eyes. And uh, we'll continue with the main story now, I think. Um, I want to go back around central Yarnum, see how everyone's doing, knock on those doors again, see how the Yarnumites are keeping up now, now that the moon is out, see how they're feeling about the world, um, say hello to all the NPCs again, because they should have new dialogue now as well, and then I think we'll make our way into the Forbidden Woods. I think that's what we'll do. And then maybe after the Forbidden Woods, before we go into Bergenworth, maybe I'll go back and take a look at Dark Beast Parl. See how I fare against him. And... What else could we do? I think I'll go to the DLC... Um, oh yeah, we'll get the Tonsil Stone for the Nightmare Frontier as well while we're in the woods. Oh, we'll just see what happens. I'm not going to make any long-term plans. <laughs> uh, but we'll definitely go around and say hello to the Arnhemites again before we do anything else. I'm liking how tidy these stats look. 20 vitality, 15 endurance, 10 strength, 35 skill. Uh, is Bloodborne your favorite among the Soulsborne games? Absolutely, uh, Volfossi, yeah. For sure. Okay, cool man. Here's the dialogue. Hunters have told me about the church, about the gods and their love. But do the gods love their creations? I am a doll created by you humans. Would you ever think to love me? Of course. I do love you. Isn't that how you've made me? Really nice. This is your favorite dialogue in the game, yeah? I'm not sure what to make of it, like in terms of interpreting it and its meaning, but I really like it. When she says, I always found that kind of uh, strange when she segues to, of course, I do love you. And what that's, how to interpret that part. Hunters have told me about the church, about the gods and their love. But do the gods love their creations? I am a doll created by you humans. Would you ever think to love me? Of course. I do love you. Isn't that how you've made me? So the comparison that's being evoked here is that the doll knows that her creators don't love her because humans obviously don't. She's a prop to be used. Right. 
but she was specifically designed to love humans because that's what that's her role in the hunter's dream humans have the exact same relationship with their creators the great ones right I guess I never even really thought about the great ones as being the creators of humanity in this but that that is it the great ones the great ones are their the great ones have created humanity what if i love her <laughs> i mean the great ones are the gods that they all worship how do we determine that that humanity is created by the Great Ones? I think they created Tumerians to watch over them. The vile bloods are are the are like the the descendants of the Tumerians as well, aren't they? The Tumerians and the vile bloods both have that special blood. You know, like the Tumerian Queen and Annalise have that in common. That they can both... They both have that blood that can birth a great one. But I think all humans ultimately come from Tumerians. The usurpers who took the special blood. I'm not even sure who you're referring to there. Very well. Let. If you look at the vile bloods, they become more Tumerian when they take the right blood. It's not a fixed thing. Tumerians weren't close to Great Ones. Coolman is suggesting that the Tumerians were like the first descendants of the Great Ones or that they were like the first human beings that were created by the Great Ones. Hunters have told me about the church, about the gods and their love. But, do the gods love their creations? I am a doll created by you humans. Would you ever think to love me? Of course. I do love you. Isn't that how you've made me? Is that a weird translation, cool man? It, it, uh, it feels weird the way she goes from, but would you ever think to love me? going from that line to of course as if she's reacting to what she just said it's it feels weird you know it's almost it almost sounds like she's she's taking the role of of the human when she says that you know as if she's acting like a human as if she's standing in for the human when she says that but I don't think that's what it is supposed to be. She is speaking as the doll. She's talking about our... She's talking genuinely about her love for us. But with, the, with how she responds to the previous line, it's almost like she's acting as if... She's taking the role of, a, of, a, of us when she says that. She's taking the role of a human when she says that. <laughs> Not sure if I'm explaining myself well there. But it's kind of weird the way, the way that line... The way it segues there. You think it's pretty natural, Listo? Yeah, maybe it's just me. Maybe it's just the way I, my mind interpreted it. Maybe I'm not thinking about it in the right way. Hunters have about the god, but to the I am a doll created by you humans. Would you ever think to love me? Of course. I do love you. It's like a reaction, you know? Of course. Like, if maybe if, if her tone of voice was different, it would sound less like a... 
it, it, maybe if her tone was different, it would sound more like a natural continuation of the previous line. To me, it just sounds kind of weird. Just that segue. It always made me wonder, is that the doll speaking about her feelings there? Or is it the doll mimicking a, a human? It's like the, the hunter asked her if she did. Yeah, I, that's kind of what it sounds like to me. Like, of course. You know, it's like she's... Yeah, it's like she's responding to a question. But uh, either way, I really love her voice. It's really nicely acted. Farewell, good hunter. May you find your worth in the waking world. I think of it as a reassurement. Even though she has these questions, her sincere feelings towards the player haven't changed, right? Um, let's pick up the, uh, the eye. The eye of a blood-drunk hunter beckons hunters to the hunter's nightmare. A deformed creature will whisk you away outside Odin Chapel. The eye of a blood-drunk hunter. Its pupil is collapsed and turned to mush indicating the onset of the scourge of beasts. A hunter who goes drunk with blood is said to be taken by the nightmare, destined to wander forever, engaged in an endless hunt. It is a fate that no hunter can escape. We'll talk more about this later on when it becomes relevant. We're not we're not going to go to the D we're not going to go to the DLC just yet. Let's go back to Central Yarnum. Take a look around. See how Gilbert is holding up. Uh, Lord Oda, I'm not sure if I said hi. How's it going? But yeah, so it's like humans are to great ones what the doll is to humans, props or dolls, yeah. I'm not sure what my favorite dialogue in the game would be, now that you mentioned that, that, that it's your favorite piece of dialogue. Um, there's a lot of dialogue in the DLC that I love. Just some really evocative stuff when you're in the, the research hall. Love Adeline and all the descriptions of the mushy blood. Uh, and just the, the, the character dialogue there. In the fishing hamlets, the priest and his chanting. Uh, the dude with the crossbow, I forget his name, in the DLC. Love that guy teasing you with his mysteries. I love Garmin. Pretty much anything that comes out of Garmin's mouth I love. Just his just his voice, his tone, his tired, weary tone. And the melancholic feel of it. All right, Gilbert, how are you holding up, man? Have I heard of Bergenworth? Hmm. Afraid I can't say that I have. The locals aren't apt to share any local history. <laughs> I'm afraid I may not be of help for much longer. Hmm. <laughs> 
Lady Maria, I'm a robin. Will I ever curl up and become an egg? What say you? <laughs> yeah, I can't wait to get to the research hall again. My favorite is from Blob, Clock Tower Patient. Have you heard how curiously the sea churns? Like a storm, but like the rain. Only gentle, like dripping water. It bellows from deep inside of me. Here it comes, up through my insides. But gently, like little droplets. Yeah, that's another one of my favorites as well. Just the contrasts. Yeah, that's a classic. Hmm. I know nothing of a bargain worth. And I'm afraid I may not be of help for much longer. <laughs> like a storm, but like the rain, only gentle, like dripping water. It's like a storm, but it's gentle. But also like dripping water, like the rain. Thunderous, but calm. Oh, Mikalash, what a legend. Forgot. Almost forgot about Mikalash. <laughs> Can't wait to hear him again. A bottomless curse, a bottomless sea. Accepting of all that there is and can be. It's a damn curse. Okay, we're gonna go we're gonna go around the main path. I think. Knock on those doors. I love how all that dialogue in the research hall really foreshadows the fishing hamlet as well. You know, like all this talk of water and bodies of water and, uh, you know, that all the patients go on and on about. And then when you get to the hamlet, it really makes it feel significant, you know? The, the ties that the DLC makes between all the areas is great. They all feel connected in some way. Oh, did I just see one of those guys disappear? They're not having a good time anymore. Really cool. Now, if we go back to all these random Yarnamite NPCs, they all have new dialogue. <laughs> a chicken balk there. Anything else?
Ah, he almost sounds like me. I do that sound every now and then. <laughs> okay, I think we got all of them. It's hard to tell. Ooh, I really like how the town looks at night here. Beautiful. Ho! Oh! We cool? That we cool. <laughs> poor you. Poor, poor you. <laughs> okay, Livia Soprano. They're still having a good time. Um, oh shit, the little girl. Do we get anything new from her now if we talk to her? We probably... No, oh shit. The little girl, is it... She, she's gone, she's finished. I didn't stay up all night, no. Die! I was just uh, up earlier than usual. Oh yeah, this one's kind of fucked, isn't it? Or just they don't have anything to say for whatever reason. That was always like this, wasn't it? Kind of feels like a bug the way the subtitle thing pops up for like a split second. But I don't think they've ever had any dialogue. I wonder what the deal is with that. Kind of feels like they're supposed to, you know, given all the other Yarnamites that you knock, that you knock on. <laughs> wow, he slept. This buggy game, yeah, isn't it awful? Ooh, yeah, he has upgraded poison now, doesn't he? I wonder, is the poison supposed to be the little girl? I wonder, is the poison... All that little girl juice that he ate... Red Messenger Ribbon. Red Ribbon that messengers are oddly fond of. The thick, pungent red was drawn from the organs of some unfortunate victim. A strange choice indeed, but perhaps for the messengers wearing this accessory constitutes a form of mourning. So this belongs to the little girl that we helped earlier. She left her house, she got eaten by this pig, and we take this we take the ribbon from the pig's body. From the pig's remains. But the fact that the pig had that poison breath there, I don't remember ever noticing that before. I, I, I probably did, but I just don't remember. That pig doesn't have poison breath earlier on in the game. So 
so it's interesting that he does after he eats the the girl i wondered i guess you could you could probably determine you know you could because you don't have to take this path i wonder does the pig always have poison breath at this point in the game If it's only when you take this path and the little girl comes through here, then I guess you'd have to say that it is that it is the little girl that's causing it. I'm not 100% on this theory, but there's some evidence that Viola is of vile blood, and that explains why her family has all these connections to Erden. Would be a good addition to the evidence if the pig became poisoned after gobbling her up. That's interesting. Where's where's the uh, what's the Viola theory? What's the evidence? Oh, you poor, poor thing. Oh! What level is my cane? I have five, I think. Okay, I think we knocked on all the relevant doors. Um, the sister appears when the red moon is out, doesn't she? That's another weird detail. Everyone else is, like, losing their mind. I think once the red moon appears, you don't get a response from any of the doors anymore. No one answers, apart from the little girl's sister up here. Which is quite ominous in itself. Yeah, we can't talk to her yet. Um, Zig Duo, if that's how I pronounce that. Thank you very much for the prime sub. Cheers. The thing that made me think of it is the red brooch. It just looks like a vile blood thing. But then later I found out that Viola is amongst the vile blood data and the files. She's a reskin of the doll. Maybe this won't land for anyone else, but Viola being a musical instrument, continuing Odin's music theme and sounding very classical makes me suspicious too. Right, okay. It's, uh, I'd always be wary about, um, cut content and stuff like that. Especially considering, like, as well as ideas that might have changed late on in development and things that they might have changed the ideas for. But that's interesting. Yeah, I always thought the Murgo's lullaby thing felt relevant. Like, that is kind of weird. You know, it is interesting that the music box has that same um, theme. But I guess that could just be uh, like a famous Yarnum melody that everyone knows. I think that's like a common interpretation of that. That it's maybe not supposed to be something that's actually so special or unique. But it is referred to as Murgo's Lullaby. You know, not like the Yarnum lullaby. Or at least I think it is. Um, okay. What am I going to do next? Back to Cathedral Ward, I think.
Okay, let's see how everyone is holding up in Urban Chapel. We still have to talk to all the new... Oh, we have to talk to all the characters now that we beat Amelia. And hey, Garman is back out in the garden. Same dialogue about Lawrence. Oh, Lawrence. Yeah. What's taking you so long? I've grown too old for this. Of little use now. Love it. Mm, cathedral Ward. Throw a rock at him. No, I'm going to leave him be. Passes. Suppose we could be friends? Give it a thought. Well, if you wouldn't mind. <laughs> oh, Granny. Granny is starting to lose her mind. Good old days. When do we get sedatives from Granny again? Is that after the Blood Moon? I think it's just when you reload this area from this point on. I think if we reload the area now, she'll have something new. Give it a rest, please. I've no time for your petty lies. But what? Just go away now. Or what? Can't Just go. The stench of your lying breath. Hello, Adela. Oh, brave hunter. Thank the gods you're safe. Do you wish to be treated with blood? Or am I unworthy of your attention? Oh. I wonder, does she only have that line if you bring Ariana here? Or does she only say that if you take her, if you take Ariana's blood? Sounds like that might be the case. I don't want your filthy blood, Adela. Forgive me, I, I should have known better. What would a brave hunter do with lowly blood like mine? Please, forget I even asked. But Ariana. Brave hunter, I pray for your safety. Oh, oh, I forgot about that. Unique dialogue when you walk away. That's so ominous, considering what she does if you betray her. Again, just to point this out for people that aren't familiar with this game, there's a really cool little detail here. Uh, when I talk to Ariana. You can see Adela there in the background. 
uh, look up at me as she spies on what I'm doing here. Adela is very jealous of Ariana, especially so if I choose to take Ariana's blood over hers. And if I keep taking Ariana's blood, Adela here will go mad and murder Ariana, and she'll also try to kill me. And I think that's what we're going to do in this playthrough. It's not the only way this can go down, but yeah. Oh, hello. Sorry, dear. You're much too eager. See her down there? I've only so much blood, okay? And now when the conversation stops, she goes back to her default position. Um... I'm just going to pop some of Ariana's blood so I can take some more. Oh, hello. Sorry, dear. You're much too easy. Oh, I probably have to reload? I've only so much. Or I have to wait for it to, uh... I have to wait for the, the, the effect to, to rub off? I didn't think you had to reload to get more. Do I have to use Yosefka's blood vial as well? Have a listen to the buff when you take her blood. It's the only blood vial in the game that's musical. I remember that. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's that's an interesting little touch, isn't it? It sounds like a chime or something. Yeah, Ariana's blood sings. Adela, your blood doesn't sing. I've only so much blood, okay? Uh, we'd miss out on one third umbilical cord that way. Yes, you're correct. Wait, are you correct? I think Ariana can have the baby and get murdered. No, she can't. Wait, yeah, 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 yeah. If we want to get all of... If we want to get all of the umbilical cords... We can't take all of Ariana's blood. And I want to see that scene, actually. I would much rather see the... Uh, the impregnation scene over the... Adela goes crazy scene. That's, I, I'm just being reminded now, that's one of the most disturbing parts of the whole game, I think. When Ariana is down there in her corner with that fucking baby. Oh my god. Horrific. Yeah, Adela, I'll take some of your blood. Huh. Brave hunter. What is it? Have you renewed thoughts on this matter? Yes. Of course. Coming close. Now. Take my blood. Just read something interesting about Viola? Yeah, yeah. I mean, share whatever you want. You don't need to uh, ask my permission to talk about lore or share theories or whatever. Yeah, you talk about whatever you want. Oh. F forgive me, I... Need more time. After killing Murgo's wet nurse, Viola's corpse will suddenly vanish. Without rhyme or reason. Really? Her body in the arena? That's actually a bug? Doesn't always happen? Fair enough. It does happen though. <laughs> I love how you only trigger that when you walk, like, really far away. It's really unusual for dialogue to trigger like that. Adela, you fucking creep. Leave me alone.
What a great old time we're all having here in Erden Chapel. Great crowd. Great people. <laughs> really wholesome fun, isn't it? Um, okay. All the, uh, the church servants are gone. No amygdala to be seen just yet. Okay. Let's go pay a visit to the other Yarnamites around the plaza. What do you got? Give me those bullets. Ooh, hey look, the, their lanterns have changed. This is another thing that's affected by your insight level. Once your insight gets to a certain level, these guys' lanterns have eyeballs all over it. And they have new abilities. Yeah, that attack that they have, that's... They only get that when I... When my insight gets to a certain point. Oh! Curse. It's a damn curse. Ooh, Jesus. Oh, hello. Yeah, they can still deal damage, these guys. Ooh, look at that guy through the fog there. Moody. That doesn't sound good. What's happening to that baby? Help me. Please help. <laughs> Wholesome. Over here! That's a rare one that you don't hear too often. Wow, Jesus! Oh, please. Sounded like bronze was being filmed. I haven't seen someone use the word bronze instead of porn since like 2010. That's still a thing? That's like JTV 2010 language.
<clears throat> What's next? The epic fail compilations? Epic win 360 no scope compilations? <laughs> That's old school, man. Prawns. <laughs> what the fuck? Why prawns? Why turn the word porn into prawns? How did that happen? Fuck you. Look at all those eyeballs. Language filters in forums. Ah, okay. Whoa, okay. Um, okay, I think we can head towards the, the Forbidden Woods now. Uh, actually, nope. There's one more spot that I want to go to. I guess we don't really have to do this now because we'll be coming here later with the tonsil stone. Lovely. <laughs> yeah, I feel like I could have done some some good voices for this game. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> That's a classic. The moon is close tonight. It'll be a long hunt. Um, if we go below, you know, to those streets with the butchers down below the abandoned workshop. If we go there, there's a guy that we can uh, knock on his door. But I don't think he actually has new dialogue. I think he's the only one that has the same thing, who says the same thing at this point in the game. And he's also the only one that will answer later when the blood moon is out. Could someone in chat confirm that that's actually the case? We could always go down and check anyway, but... I hear wandering madness. I think that's true. I... That's... That's what uh, comes to mind anyway. That's what I remember it being like. I just remember, I remember that guy down there being a unique case. Or maybe he has three separate bits of dialogue, whereas all the other Yarnamites have two. Let's go down just to make sure. 
being very thorough here with the random Yarnamite dialogue, but I like it, so I want to see it all. Hello. Heir to the ritual of blood, purveyor of ministration. Place your hand on the altar's sacred covering and inscribe Master Lawrence's adage upon your flesh. We never really spoke about that scene when it happened. After the Amelia fight when we touch the skull and we get the flashback. We see Lawrence and Willem parting ways. Lawrence who would leave Bergenworth to found the Healing Church. Being the Healing Church's founder. And we hear the, uh, the old adage, fear the old blood. <clears throat> which I think suggests, you know, that's, that um, the scholars at Bergenworth, they, under Master Willem's orders, they were never to really fuck with the blood. And Lawrence, once he founded the church, he went his own way. And he um, ignored the sacred adage and started all this blood healing and that's when shit started to go awry. We are born of the blood, made men by the blood, undone by the blood. Our eyes are yet to open. Fear the old blood. Yeah, their, their eyes... Willem Willem suggests that they're not they're not wise enough to go fucking with the blood. Their eyes are not yet open. So until our eyes are open, we must fear the old blood. To which Lawrence said, "Nah, fuck that shit. I'm going to I'm going to make I'm going to start up a blood industry." Back to the dream. I also like to read that line as remarking about their immaturity, like an infant that hasn't opened its eyes yet. Amelia also comments on Will's weak, mine's young. Right. Right. Yeah, that's that's what I was trying to get at. Yeah, that the the line our eyes are yet to open is to basically say we're not we're immature beings. We're you know, our eyes are yet to open, so we're not we're not um, we shouldn't be touching this blood. We should be very careful with how we deal with this blood. That we're, we're immature beings. We need to tread carefully. At our current insight level, this blood is to be feared. We don't have the required understanding. Bloody Crow, what's up? Um, what was I going to do? Old workshop. Hey, what's up, Van? How's it going? I did. I did. 
Congrats. Beautiful. Yeah, I think he's just gonna have the same. Yeah. Anaya curses. Anaya to remember. Will you say, friend? <laughs> See you later. See what you're saying here. One of the ground floor themes is the idea that there's a natural flow of time. Hold on. Let me just get out of the way here. And when you try to fuck with it, things get messed up. Stagnation isn't just dirty old water. It's also a failure to allow history to continue. Yeah, you really get that impression in uh, in Sekiro, especially. Um, with um, the water flow, the stagnation within the in the palace, Fountainhead Palace. In Bloodborne, they tried to speed it up and ultimately regressed instead. The moral is always is always don't mess with it, right? With regards to the natural flow of time, as if you're artificially preventing your your death from happening, that's very much in line with Souls and Sekiro. I guess you don't always... The, the, the blood isn't really overtly spoken of in that way in Bloodborne. You know, it's like just preventing sickness, preventing illness. You know, it's just to help with natural diseases and stuff. But if it is to, like, keep you alive beyond your natural lifespan, then yeah. Like, for a lot of people, it might seem strange that in Sekiro, the good ending is ensuring that it's possible for you to die. But that, but that idea has the same DNA, right? In Dark Souls, instead of the flow of time is convoluted, it's like the, it's like time is stagnant. Is that how it's described in Japanese? It's that that's that's it's closer to time is stagnant than time is convoluted. Yeah. Oh wow. That's uh, that's really interesting. That's way more uh, thematically in line with the with the. Uh, with the game, with the game. That's really cool. In what ways are we shown in this that the blood is used to keep people alive beyond their natural lifespan? How do we come to that conclusion? And that it's not just people being healed of their sickness.
because the blood is of the same kind of the vile bloods or something like that and the vile bloods are like these everlasting vampires well not everlasting but yeah I remember watching a small video essay about that theme of stagnation. It drew parallels with Japanese history. How they suffered from a period of peace and stagnation while other countries were in constant progress, right? Yeah, it's like a big thing in, uh, in Shinto. And very overt in Sekiro. But it seems to be a big theme in all of their games. I don't think it's super important one way or the other, to be honest. This game doesn't seem that interested in stressing the idea, but it fits if you want it. Okay. Well, just with how you said, you know, when you were talking about time. And I assume that's what you were referring to when you were talking about the flow of time when you fuck with it calling that one of the ground floor themes. I thought it would have like a... I thought you were suggesting that... that there was some like overt part of... some part of the game that was overt in that way when it comes to... stressing the idea of time. The flow of time. I meant more so that they're using the blood to speed up their evolution, but right, okay, that's what you were getting at. Okay, okay. I wasn't uh, explaining myself where I wasn't explaining myself well there, but you uh, you caught on in what I was saying. Yeah, yeah, that works as well, right? You're fucking with uh, you're fucking with evolution like that. Hey, what's up, buddy arts? I like the time is convoluted part because most people use it to explain and wave away weird time shenanigans in the story, which I always disliked. Yeah, like the, that that piece of dialogue has been used as a as a way to like yeah, as you said, like to wave away certain things. People generally point it out as being like a flaw of the of the world building or the story. But that's that's interesting knowing the um the Japanese version. Alfred, how's it going, man? Oh, good to see you safe. Now, let's think up something to discuss. Just tell me what piques your interest. You know, p uh, people spoke as if the line was written to be an excuse, you know? As if that was the main purpose for that piece of dialogue, was to excuse crazy time shenanigans in the story. <laughs> Uh, Mountain Dew with the 22 months. Thank you. And maybe you could still say it does in a way. But that really is, uh, that does make that a lot more interesting, knowing that in Japanese it's, it's, it's referred to as stagnant time. Um, the Vile Bloods. We have some new information here now. There's something I want to tell you. A bit of wisdom from the eminent master Lugarius. Once, a scholar betrayed his fellows at Bergenworth and brought forbidden blood back with him to Canehurst Castle. It was there 
that the first of the inhuman Vilebloods was born. The Vilebloods are fiendish creatures who threaten the purity of the Church's blood healing. The ruler of the Vilebloods is still alive today. <clears throat> and so, to honor my master's wishes, I search for the path to Kanehurst Castle. You're full of shit, Alfred. In his time, Master Lagarius led his executioners into Kanehurst Castle to cleanse it of the vile bloods. But all did not go well, and Master Lagarius became a blessed anchor, guarding us from evil. Tragic, tragic times. That Master Lagarius should be abandoned in the accursed domain of the vile bloods. I must free him, so that he may be properly honored in martyrdom. I completely forgot about this second bit of dialogue. I'm pretty sure I've done playthroughs of this game where I never went to ask him about Vilebloods for a second time. I wasn't expecting to get new dialogue there when I asked about Vilebloods again. In his time, Master Lagarius led his executioners into Kanehurst Castle to cleanse it, but all did not go well. And Master Lagarius became a blessed anchor, guarding us from evil. Tragic. Tragic times that Master Lagarius should be abandoned in the accursed domain of the Vilebloods. I must free him so that he may be properly honored in martyrdom. It's interesting because very slowly we see these ideas of stagnation and stuff. When people found out about it for a while, everyone just thought, okay, all corruption is caused by stagnation. But later, on taking a wider view, it really informs a lot of the larger story beats. Like how the games are always about transitioning or failing to transition from one era to another. Yeah, for sure. Does he have anything new about Bergenworth here? Bergenworth is an old place of learning. And the Tomb of the Gods, carved out below Yarnum, should be familiar to every hunter. Well, once a group is in, but today it's uncut only. Same thing. I bid you farewell. It has been a pleasure. May the good blood guide your way. The password. <laughs> That's one way to ask for a password. We did this dialogue yesterday, and that actually it went on for way longer when we did that dialogue yesterday. I wonder can we still get it? Let's try. He went on for like another 30 seconds. Usually it's short and sweet, like that. Password. <laughs> the password. <laughs> the password. <laughs> I'm gonna keep going. I want to hear him do his big rant again to see if we can get the same one as yesterday. Maybe you can only trigger it once, though. The password. Yeah. The password. That was a new laugh. The password. Okay. One more. password <laughs> 
Oh, no, no, Knock, 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 knock. <laughs> the receipt has wheeze. <laughs> I can't do it. <laughs> do you hear the big wheeze out of him there? All right, fear the old blood. <laughs> I can't do it. I need to smoke a million cigarettes before I can do that. Talk. Already dead, and but we get madman's knowledge from him. As if this explains why he was able to speak to us. It was our insight. He was speaking in from another plane of existence. Such a cool moment. Cool little moment. Love how he's just chilling on this pillar here as well. This broken pillar. Alright, so we, uh, we speak Master Lawrence's adage. Or Willem's and, Mas and Lawrence's old adage. And that will allow us access to the Forbidden Woods. Do we hear him if we get... Oh, you know, I don't know, Laguna. What if you have zero insight? Do you still get the same dialogue? You probably do. But that would be really cool if that was something they actually changed. Or if you have to have, like, a certain amount of insight to get through the door. I don't remember anyone ever bringing that up before, so I'm assuming that's not a thing. That would be a really cool detail, though. Okay, we're here. With these mad gravestones. This place is a great one graveyard, I think. Um, it's not. It's not something that's... Immediately obvious. I think in the official art books, it's revealed that the giant gravestones here are Great One graves. And we'll see later on that this place is just covered in those graves. And maybe even these smaller gravestones are supposed to be like grave, Great One graves as well. I don't know. But they almost seem like they're a part of the natural environment here. Like they're just flowers sprouting out of the ground. I think the dialogue is the same always, yeah. The fact that they're all weird looking makes me think it's something not human. Yeah, like they have that kind of fleshy look to them almost. Like you could split it apart and it would be all bloody inside. Kind of like the, the next tier of grave that we see later on in the Nightmare Frontier and in the Nightmare Realms. Those graves are definitely not man-made. But these ones, yeah, these ones might not be either. I don't know. Oh, Valter is coming up. I just remembered. Hunt and kill to your heart's content. Walter has a great voice. Ooh, hello.
Madman's knowledge. Some gemstones. Nice. Yeah, I commented on that the other day, Mr. X. He has a nice, uh... He has a nice, um... He has nicely colored fur. A little hint of red. What did I miss in the last three hours? Since you just... Um, I did a chalice dungeon at the start of the stream, Bloody Crow. Because I started the stream early, I didn't want to get straight into the, into the story. Because I knew some people would miss it, so we did a we did a big chalice dungeon. And uh, after that, I went around and knocked on all the doors in Central Yarnum just to get the new dialogue. Then knocked on all the doors and windows in the main plaza area around the Grand Cathedral. Um. There are some NPC hunters around here, aren't there? I guess they don't appear until later. I can't remember what the deal is with these NPC hunters. Yeah, we can't talk to Walter yet either. We have to come up from the from the other side. Love how the fog looks here in the trees. So, what's the deal with these Yarnamites down here? Are these guys supposed to be white church doctors? Or did they just, like, adopt their clothing? They're all wearing white. They even have the white jackets. White hats. And the, uh... The white church doctor gloves. And we find the White Church Doctor set down here as well. So they really want us to be thinking about the White Church Doctors in this area. It's a reskin, but I think that's the idea. Yeah, I kind of get that impression as well. If if they if they had more time, you'd think they would have wanted the, these the, these guys to look a bit different. They're just trying to communicate the idea that these were white church doctors. They probably shouldn't look like regular Yarnamites if this place is supposed to be blocked off. You know? If regular Yarnamites aren't supposed to be allowed in here. I guess it would just be weird having just, you know, regular Yarnamites be here. Nasty. White church doctors were all about experimentation, weren't they? The black church doctors were the executioners, and the white church doctors were all about, um, you, you know, finding test subjects. We'll, uh, we'll find the set soon, anyway. We'll, uh, we'll get the description of them very soon when we find the set here. There's also one body that has blue elixir on it here. Which and the, which the description mentions that white, ch white church doctors used it in their experiments, right? Uh, do I have any pebbles? Oh, these slow assholes. Here, you. You'll be up here faster. Go. 
so the real Yusefka is not as friendly as she seems. Yeah, the, the real one that is. Yeah, that's what I always thought anyway. I mean, she's a white church doctor. How friendly can she be? You know, that her 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 job description implies that she's uh, not so great herself. You know, she probably believes that she's like a noble soul, but yeah. She probably sees herself as an upstanding member of the church. Ooh. Jesus. That was messy. The white ones intentionally spread dis disease, slipping uh, people beast blood pellets and shit. Yo, we find loads of beast blood pellets down here as well, yeah. So they can study it. Where you find where you find beast blood pellets, you're mostly finding the influence of the white church doctors because they're produced by the church. The bestiary says they were chased out of the city. So I like to imagine they were one of the main forces behind fucking up old Yarnum. So afterwards, people got fed up and kicked them out. Kind of interesting to think of someone like fake Yusefka being, or the, the real Yusefka, not really working for the church. If she's supposed to be a white church doctor and someone that was chased out of the town. That's a bit strange, isn't it? Because she does talk as if she is still an upstanding member of the church. I think, anyway, you know? When she's, like, wishing for a fruitful hunt, and... It's like she has this kind of official business going there, you know? Yusefka's clinic. It feels like, uh... You know, the blood ministration that we get at the start of the game. It doesn't feel like she's a character that's, like, on the run, you know? I get the impression that everyone knows Yusefka is there. The church and everyone. Fake Yusefka definitely feels like a bit of an outlaw. But uh, the real Yusefka, you don't really get that impression. Fuck off. Yeah, I'm not even going to bother with those crows. Hey, what's up, Mr. Man? How's it going? The choir is an inner echelon of the healing church. Wasn't the choir, like, mainly composed of white church doctors? And don't we find out that the choir split from the church as well? So I guess that would make sense if all choir members were white church doctors and, and the choir then split from the church. That would line up with uh, the bestiary lore or whatever, wouldn't it? Maybe that's why she locked herself in the clinic, doesn't want anyone in knowing how people are upset with white garbs. Maybe you kind of get she suggests that it's because it's the night of the hunt, right? Because it's just too dangerous tonight. That would be the the clearest answer to that question, I think. You know, I, I like I feel like we should be taking real Yusefka by her word, you know? I and I think that's what she implies. 
But maybe you could be right. The choir is like a specific branch of in of intellectuals. It's not so much they split from the church, so much as they split the church into two factions. Mensis and the choir, right. <laughs> Wait, when you say they split the church into two factions, who? Just the church? The church split the church into two factions? Mensis and the choir? I, I, I thought I remembered there being some part of the lore where, like, one of them was, like, cast out. One group was cast out. I thought it was the choir. Remember, initially, I thought it was Mensis, but then it was... Then I found out it was the choir that was actually cast out. But now it was now it's neither. <laughs> maybe it's maybe that was like another uh, misinterpretation based off the English uh, version. Uh, Rabid chimps with the prime sub. Thank you very much. <laughs> Going fucking hardcore with the lore discussions today. It's been non-stop. I hope you've been enjoying it. It's probably absolute gibberish to uh, many of you. But hopefully it's still enjoyable to watch. <laughs> if you haven't played the game, you don't know much about the story, it'll just sound like gobbledygook after this talk. Uh, we picked up some beast blood pellets there, our first three. Some thick cold blood. Oh yeah, we never looked at the um, this other path. Always love this little patch here. This intense red glow. Extremely reminiscent of Pyramid Head in Silent Hill 2. By Pyramid Head's first appearance. When you turn off the flashlight and he glows. And then you turn it back on. And the glow is gone. The exact same. What is it? Where is this? Where is this light source? Is it light? It has to be light. What is this? What is this redness? It's over here on this rock as well. It's just blood. It's just magical blood. I don't have an answer for it, but I've often wondered whether or not we're supposed to even see her. Maybe we're not, and maybe the duplicate Yusefka thing isn't even an intentional part of the story. Um, wait, hold on. Yeah, I think I'm missing part of what you're saying here. But yeah, I agree that the presentation of Yusefka is at odds with her being a white church doctor. And I'm 100% on board with uh, taking her at her word. I think it's good to do that with all characters unless it's very clearly indicated um, they're wrong or lying. Yeah, I think just with how really Sefka is written, you know, it's just... You know, it really feels like she believes what she's saying, you know? Uh, it, she doesn't feel manipulative. You know, I don't get the sense that she's, you know, trying to hide who she really is or anything. It would be a little bit weird to go from that to the fake Yusefka as well. You know, if both of them were kind of the same character. Well, I mean, I guess it depends how you look at it. I don't know. Second Yusefka has a different VA. Yeah, that's not what we're really, that's not what we're talking about, though. We're not, we're not trying to suggest that they're both the same person or anything like that. Or at least I don't think anyone is trying to suggest it that much. We're just talking about the nature of the white church doctors. If you assume you're not supposed to see regular Yusefka... A lot of the mysteries surrounding her clear up. I'm not really too enthusiastic about it, though. It's a lot of what's interesting about her story. Yeah, you're saying that they just... Um, ah, you know, I, I, like, I think they... 
if she wasn't supposed to be a white church doctor, I think they would have given her different clothing, you know? I, th I reckon they knew that you could see through the door there to get a little look. Maybe not. I don't know. I think the first Yusefka VA voices someone from an earlier game. So big fans apparently knew something was up, which is a cool touch. Oh, well, did, did the games use a lot of recurring voice actors? A lot of voice actors get reused from game to game for various characters. And sometimes you'll have one actor in the same game who does multiple characters. So I don't think that would really suggest that there was something up necessarily with the character. You know, oh, wait, there's... We're seeing the same voice actor again. Um, although sometimes they will use the same voice actor to like to tie in with the character in a meaningful way. Like Alfred having Solaire's voice actor and also playing off who Solaire was as a character. But in the case of Yusefka, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not sure if they do any funky stuff with reusing voice actors, do they? The real Yusefka definitely does play someone else in the Souls games, though, for sure. I just can't think of who it is. But I don't think Yusefka is supposed to play off that character in any way. You know, like Alfred does to Solaire or anything like that. But I could be wrong. Hello. Hello. <laughs> I hope I uh, made myself clear enough there as well. Maybe I didn't express my thoughts properly there. I think I did, though. Oh! Oh, you bitch! Oh, that's so painful! I shouldn't have died there. Ah! The counter damage and from that range. Yeah. Oh, what a fucking stupid death. Okay, out of my way. No problem. Back to where we were. You gonna follow me down here? Fuck you. Go back home. Bunyan, what's up? Yusefka was Quilana. Fake Yusefka is also Adela the Nun and Vicar Amelia. Okay. Great VAs. It's a damn kiss! Fuck you. Pungent cocktail. Ooh, we get to speak to Patches soon. Speaking of recurring voice actors. And characters. Yeah, on my uh, my first playthrough, I don't think I ever encountered the real Yusefka. I never went back to that sick room until after Gascoigne. So I had no idea what they were doing there. <laughs> she was the only Yusefka as far as I was concerned. Do you have to destroy this the stuff here? Oh no, you don't. Oh, a hunter of beasts, are you? Glory be. 
you know not the value you possess. But more's the pity. The hours of the night are many, and the beasts more than I can count. A veritable hunt unending. Not even death offers solace, and the blood imbibes you. <laughs> A most frightful fate. Oh my. But I'm willing to do you a kindness. Step lightly round to the right of the great cathedral and seek an ancient shrouded church. The gift of the Godhead will grant you strength. Yes, I'm unquestionably certain. <laughs> Love it. The tonsil stone. Not even death offers solace. And the blood imbibes you. That's pretty sinister. Not even death offers solace. And the blood imbibes you. Seek you the ancient shrouded church hidden to the right of the main cathedral. The gift of the Godhead will grant you strength. Why are you telling me this, Patches? What is your plan? Patches just wants us to get fucked up by Amygdala, doesn't he? He's like a servant of Amygdala. Why does Amygdala need me? Amygdala's just hungry? I forget what we can really infer here from Patches and the Nightmare Frontier and all of that. I remember the Nightmare Frontier is like a manifestation of Loran. The land of Loran, which was afflicted with the Scourge before Yarnum in some other time. Amygdalans, they like to eat people. I see. We're like insects. In their web. Let's take a look at this tonsil stone, which also has the, uh, the shape of an amygdala head. A latticed, deformed rock, or perhaps a meteorite, appears useless but possesses some odd gravitational force that prevents its riddance. A dubious soul once said, step lightly round to the right of the great cathedral and seek an ancient shrouded church. The gift of the Godhead will grant you strength. So now that we have this, when we get grabbed... By that creature, the amygdala, it will now transport us to another land. We won't do that just yet, though. Interestingly, amygdalans are actually ripped from EverQuest. Even the lore is really similar. Really? Same name, similar design, lore is similar? Really? That's interesting. This NPC has different dialogue, actually, but Patches comes out after opening the Forbidden Woods door. And this is the first NPC you meet. That's correct, Bloody Crow. I remember now. So we can... If we reload the area now, we'll, we'll talk to a different NPC there, right? Yeah, I remember. I, I didn't know that was a thing for the longest time. But, um... Yeah, I remember now. Here's the white church set. Attire of special church doctors. These doctors are superiors to the black preventative hunters and specialists in experimentally backed 
blood ministration and the scourge of the beast. They believe that medicine is not a means of treatment, but rather a method for research, and that some knowledge can only be obtained by exposing oneself to sickness. So there we have it. All about that experiment, all about those experiments. They believe that medicine is not a means of treatment, but rather a method for research. That's pretty grim. And some knowledge can only be obtained by exposing oneself to sickness. Okay, where am I going? In EverQuest, there's even a story for why there are so many copies of them. Once upon a time, the first four children of Kazakh Thul went to see their father with demands. The hateful father took his children in his hands and squashed them into a ball of pulp. He then split the ball in two and continued to divide this matter over and over. What the fuck happened? Over and over again until he was left with, with thousands of mini-gods, the Amygdalans. Interesting. Down here, we have all these flowers. This is like, um, don't we see flowers that look just like this in our ritual materials? I'm not sure if I have any of them now. But they're just like, like basic cold blood flowers. Flowers that come out of cold blood. Something like that. A couple of antidotes. All these bodies here. All these remains. Really strange area. Love that massive grave over there, the light shining down on it. This mercurial looking liquid here as well. Mercury poisoning. Probably gonna get my ass killed here. Dirty blood gemstone. Oh, stay away! I don't think there's much else to find down here. Oh! Yeah, I'm just gonna have a run around here. I don't suppose these giants have unique drops down here, do they? These poor giants are in bad shape. 
This poison has done a number on them. Those are the same worms that spawn out of Lauren's silver beasts. I can't... I'm not sure if they're the same, but that does ring a bell. I know you see loads of them in uh, Kanehurst as well. Along with those blood lickers. Christ. Arcane gemstone. Love that image of this somber giant, the light coming down. Remember, they have that fast lunge. You need to be careful. Frenzied cold blood. Ooh. Yeah, I think I'm just going to leave those giants be. No need to kill them. More skeletons. Hey, Cypher with the seven months. Thank you. All these bodies here as well. <laughs> look at those, look at those gravestones packed over there. These, see these gravestones, they have to be, they can't be man-made. What is this? Who put those gravestones there? These bodies were thrown down here, surely. Nobody was... Nobody was nice enough to build graves here. That can't be... That can't be right. These are bigger than the normal skeletons you see in the game as well, right? At least I think so. Some big looking skeletons. Are they supposed to be giants? It's weird. I don't think we get any lore on, like, the, the giants at all. Like, I don't think anyone talks about them. I don't think there are any descriptions about them. It's kind of unusual to see them down there, especially with all these skeletons. Maybe they're loved ones? I really don't think so, uh, Van. These are all research experiments that were dumped down here. This is the back of Yusefka's clinic. This is Yusefka's graveyard. One of the coolest loop arounds in the whole game here. Here we are, back at the beginning of the game. Great shot of the moon, those rays coming through the trees. Have, yeah, feel free, cool man, if you have any info on those giants. Feel free to post it. Let's just have another look at that hole. Kind of interesting the way it's laid out. We have all these other graves here. But this one... That leads down into the swamp. Into that mass grave.
Ooh, hello. A large man who is used by the medical church, which oversees the medical treatment of blood in Yarnum to hunt beasts. He's a being from a half terrifying legend, and his expression is very bleak. His huge body is unusually thin, his skin pale, and he is said to wield a huge silver weapon with a scream. The bell around his neck was a warning of the big man's terrible hunt. <laughs> If they heard the sound, the people of Yarnum would close their doors tightly and never go out. I like that. Okay, so not not much, really. Just big man who works for the church. Very scary when he's around. Close those doors. The big man. With the somber expression. They do, they are very somber giants. I really do like their, uh, their melancholic feel. Um, right, so if we want to, um, get the scene with fake Yosefka and the impregnation and all that, we don't want to go, we don't want to approach her now. We can enter and take a look around. We just don't want to go too far. Getting that madman's knowledge as soon as we enter. That's not exclusive to every area in the game, is it? Where you like, you reach a new area and you get some madman's knowledge. I don't think it is. That's just for certain areas. But here, as soon as we enter the clinic, we get some of that knowledge. I think I can go in here. Yeah, oh boy, here's the real Yosefka. Oh, and the summons. Yeah, I forgot. This is what happened to the real Yosefka. Your mouth looks like a rib cage. And this is how we know it's Yusefka for sure, because she has one of her blood vials. And it's kind of a common theme here, you know, if you send all the other villagers to the clinic, they'll all appear here as celestial emissaries. And you can tell which villager is which by the item that they drop. Like, if you send Ariana here and kill the, the alien, um which Ariana becomes, she'll drop Ariana's shoes. So we can tell that this is Yosefka because Yosefka's blood vial. And it's right behind the door as well where we spoke to her. Um, yeah, I'll just leave it there. Kanehurst summons. This is where the game begins. That's where we were lying. 
An old bloodstained summons inviting an honored guest to the forsaken castle Canehurst. Rather bafflingly, it is addressed to you. Do not hesitate. The stagecoach leaves from Hemwick Crossing. Love this. Just classic gothic horror vibes. Spooky ghostly letter leading us off to the vampire's castle. Um, I guess I can open this now. May as well. Ah, oh, maybe I shouldn't have done that. Maybe we miss out on some dialogue with Fake Yusefka. Ah, uh, after Rom, she goes up to her room anyway. That doesn't matter. I don't think we did miss out on any dialogue, and if we did, ah, doesn't matter. We didn't, we didn't go this, we didn't choose this path. Yeah, I'm not sure when we'll do Kanehurst. Not for a while, anyway. After Rom, at some point. Uh, I think there is another communion rune in here, if my memory serves me well. Yeah, like right now, she's up in her room. We're not going to approach her because that would fuck up our whole plan. Um, but I think maybe if I if I left this area and went back around from the from the other side, she would still be at the door. She'd teleport back to the door. I don't know, though. Um, yeah, we got a better communion rune. Since Kanehurst's magic is mostly illusory, you even have the crown of illusions, my assumption with that is that whomever breaks the seal to open the summons will find their name written inside. It explains why the sealed summons without an address gives Alfred passage to Kanehurst, because he would have broken the seal on that one and found his name inside. I'm trying to remember what the deal is with the sealed summons. That sounds interesting, though. Cool. You you'll have to bring that up to me again when we uh, when we get to Kanehurst. Okay, I think we can leave this place for now, and we'll come back. Low life with the 51 months. Thank you. Hemp mind, you're obsessed with this smoked meat, I swear. <laughs> Alright, back down. Let's explore the rest of the Forbidden Woods. I'm completely unsympathetic to all the theories about how the player came to Yarnum because of a summons to Kaners. I never liked that theory. I, uh, I always really disliked that uh, theory of Red Graves as well. I was talking about that before, where the theory is uh, hinges on our character's past being set in stone, like the class that you pick, that the class... Canonically, the class 
that the player character is is the one from the hamlet because that's supposed to be the fishing hamlet which ties in with Braidor being like stand in for the player or whatever i really hated that I was just like, no, they wouldn't do that. They wouldn't have like a, a canonically set in stone character with a with a defined past like that. It would just go against the, the whole point of being able to select a character to create your own character. <laughs> I mean, maybe that is maybe that is correct. I mean, I'm not saying for sure, but I really just dislike the theory. I forget I forget what the what the full theory even is now but something to do with your class the character of your the class of your character being set in stone that we are from the that our character is from the fishing hamlet I'm like no my character is is a waste of skin we don't know where our character is from Yeah, I just feel like it's it isn't something that they would do. I, I thought the whole Hamlet thing was a bit of a stretch as well. You know, that the Hamlet mentioned in that description was the same as the fishing Hamlet. I mean, maybe. Wouldn't you be a fish if you came from there? Yeah, I mean, how did we get out of there on fish? Maybe some regular humans are still there. I don't know, locked up, safe and sound. Look at this guy trying to lock me out here. Nope. I think sometimes Miyazaki does stuff just because of uh, gameplay and people try to give it sense. Oh, yeah, I'm sure that does happen. Like, I often wonder about Yusefka's blood vial outside of Murgo's arena. Like, maybe they just put that there just so the player could have a, a special vial. Just, just in case they were struggling. But again, maybe it is there for a purpose as well. Sometimes it's hard to know for sure, you know, because there obviously is a lot of attention to detail when it comes to that sort of storytelling and contextual item placements and stuff like that, alluding to certain things within the story. Um... But yeah, I'm sure sometimes uh, we do end up analyzing stuff that actually didn't, wasn't put somewhere for a purpose. Oh, I can't open it again? Okay. <laughs> the Bloodborne VODs are on the YouTube channel. Yep. Exclamation mark YT2. If you want to link to my archive YouTube channel, it's Kumori who's been uploading all of the VODs as well. So shout out to Kumori. Ooh, Beast Roar. Hello.
Wow! Triple. Come on. Do your thing. Six vials. Let's take a look at that beast roar. One of the forbidden hunter tools made by a reverent Izzy. Borrow the strength of the terrible undead dark beasts, if only for a moment, to blast surrounding foes back with the force of a roaring beast. The indescribable sound is broadcast with the caster's own vocal cords, which begs the question, what terrible things lurk deep within the frames of men? What a description. We were beasts all along. It just had to be unlocked. The blood only triggered the metamorphosis. The beast has been inside all along. It makes you more of what you already are, yeah. Or it, un it unlocks that part of who you what you are. There, there's definitely a theme here in the woods of, like, forbidden research, forbidden items, forbidden tools. The beast roar, the white church doctors, which were cast out using all these forbidden items, the beast blood pellets. Um, I guess there's this is uh, there's also a connection to the, the, the dark beast that we'll find here as well later on. We do find a dark beast in this area. Which is interesting. <laughs> These guys really don't look like doctors, do they? These guys are really white church doctors. Hello. Wexford, is this your first time seeing this game? I don't think you've watched me play this before, have you? I don't think you were around back in the big Bloodborne days. Ooh, Ooh that oily water down there. Ah, what a pain. Um, so we can deal extra damage with fire here. Given this oily water, if we throw a Molotov down here, it should do extra damage. Not in those days, no. It's great to hear you enjoy yourself so much. You obviously love it and bring it alive. Oh, thank you, Wex. That's very nice of you to say. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm definitely a big uh, fanatic for this game, for sure.
Yeah, it's how I first uh, met Dave on Twitch as well. I was just looking. I was in a big Bloodborne phase, and I was just looking for other streamers who were playing Bloodborne. And, you know, most people were just doing speedruns and just gameplay-focused stuff, and I was looking for someone who was into the lore and looking for someone who was going to take it slow. And uh, that's how I found Dave. He was... Uh, he was uh, getting into the lore and like reading all the descriptions and stuff. And I was back in the early days of Bloodborne, you know, when we were all just figuring it all out. Really good times. Oof, the range. Uh, this is a little pit here. Which isn't actually too dangerous. This looks like a, an absolute death trap, but... Just, just a few crows. I mean, crows are still pretty nasty, but not the worst thing in the world. Remember saying a lot of stupid shit back in the old days? Ah, <laughs> oh, man, I wish I saved my first playthrough. I'd love to go back and watch my first Bloodborne playthrough just to see what my reactions were to certain things. Um, okay, I think we're... Obviously, we loop back here now. Wait, I think there's another... Hope! Oh. Yeah, I don't think we searched all the houses here. The hooded man laying down next to the stone gate here sounds different from the others, does he? I feel like I missed something here. Oh, fuck. Here we go, here we go. More beast blood pellets. Forbidden research. Five more days till Elden Ring. I'm so glad I decided to play this. Leading up to Elden Ring, getting me in that FromSoft mood. Getting me prepared. Oh, really, Crow? That's interesting. Through Night Play and Red Day. Oh. I thought I had the range. Clip through. Really, Listo, you weren't enjoying Forbidden West. Like, uh, like uh, I'm, I might give it a try. I'll, I'll probably watch some streams of it and see how I feel about it. I think that's what I'll do.
This cane feels good. It's well made and all. I just found it very uninteresting, even though I finished Zero Dawn. Yeah, did you did you like Horizon Zero Dawn, Listo? Yeah, I, I could just never... I never got into the world in Zero Dawn, and I just dropped it early. Oh, shit. Don't kill me. I just remembered at the last second. This guy. Well, I'm liking it. Aww. <laughs> it's okay, Sniper Wolf. Everyone doesn't need to like the same things. It'd be a bit boring if that was the case. Everyone had the same opinion on everything. Boop! No! <laughs> oh! I'm too good to die to that asshole. I'm above you. I don't die to creatures like you. Oh! The pain! <laughs> Get out of my way. <laughs> Fuck off. That red fur, it really is reminiscent of the, uh, the Demon of Hatred in uh, Sekiro. Overconfidence. Yeah, I just wasn't uh, paying... Full attention. Maybe, yeah, maybe a bit of overconfidence as well. Get out of my way. I better not lose these blood echoes. I won't be pleased. Oh! <laughs> he killed his friend. Okay. We meet again. I'm afraid now. Fuck you. Seventy-five thousand echoes. Yeah, I enjoyed the first uh, hour or so of uh, Horizon, like when you're playing as a kid and then you get to push it to the limit uh, montage sequence where she starts running around with Tony Montana or whatever. Uh, that was cool, but then once she was grown up and I had to go around and cycle through dialogue options in a town with all these NPCs that I didn't give a fuck about, that's when I just completely dropped off. I'm like, oh god, I don't care about any of this any of these dialogue options. I don't give a shit about this world. That's when I... That's when I stopped. I, I, like, I really... I don't have much of an opinion on Horizon, you know? I didn't play it for long enough to really experience what it was all about. Just didn't get good early vibes and just dropped it.
Oh. Are you playing it right now, Nico? I know you said you were going to go back and give it another try before trying out um, uh, Forbidden West. Oh, you finished it yesterday. Okay. Okay, I think we're done with uh, this first part of the forest. Maybe I missed an item or two. I think we got all the crucial stuff. Hey, nice one, Recuster. Oh, the snake. The snake man. Ooh, I think we get a good view of Bergenworth from uh, from this spot. Maybe I'm thinking of another spot. Ooh. Where is this? I'm going to drop down here. Yeah, there's Bergenworth. So cool. Hope. Yeah, I heard you. Ooh, the third smash. interesting looking at some of the concept art for Bergenworth compared to how it looks here if you compare the the uh, the concept art to this if you compare the building and the concept art to the building here it looks like here we're just seeing the central hub and it's missing the east wing and the west wing and the concept art they're like two other main parts of the building. One attached to the left, one to the right. But it looks like they had to change that in the final version. You know, we don't really, we, we only get to go to the college inside the nightmare. When we reach Bergenworth itself here, outside the nightmare, we only get to go in, in, into one small part of it. For some reason, they had to like cut it and present it in a different way. You know, they had to present the classrooms and all that to all those parts in another way. I think originally we were supposed to see all of that right there, you know, and we actually visit the real Bergenworth. Didn't want people to think the level would be bigger than it is. Yeah, I mean, like, it, I guess it wouldn't make sense if, if it was this massive building and we could only go into, like, one small little area. That would be a bit weird, right? But, yeah, I think originally that building would have been much bigger and you'd see, like, a whole east and, less, east and west wing. And then when we arrive, there'd be like classrooms and all those areas that we do get to see later, but in the nightmare. You know, because we, we see two forms of Bergenworth College in this game. We see the, the building up there, which we'll go to later. And then also the version of Bergenworth in the nightmare. But I reckon initially that was all just going to be one big area. Maybe not. Maybe not. But based off the concept art and 
just how it feels in the game. You know, it's kind of weird that we go to the, we visit the classrooms in another realm rather than in the actual real world, quote unquote real world, if this is the real world. You think so, Simon? Or could it be that we just know more about the cut content of this game? But uh, you might be right. There is a, There certainly is a lot of info on the cut content of this game. Hey, welcome back, cool man. Cool man, I was just talking about Bergenworth here. Hey, actually, that, that was the image I posted today in my going live tweet. Um, I think, anyway, that image I posted was concept art of Bergenworth, where it was like this building, but with a, with a giant west wing and a giant east wing, where it was like three times the size. And I'm assuming they cut that down because... Um, you know, given how it's presented in the game, you know, how they had to put the classroom section in the nightmare. But that was probably different originally in the concept that we were probably supposed to visit that classroom area when we visited Bergenworth here. Yeah, like it looks like a massive... Um, yeah, it's a massive building in the concept art, which makes sense, you know, if it's supposed to be this big school, you know, if it's supposed to be this giant academic institution. I know people theorized as well about the hatch, you know, that hatch inside Bergenworth, that that, that hatch was going to lead down into the classroom areas. Maybe that was also an idea, I don't know. Large prototype firearms fashioned by the workshop heretics, the powder kegs. Use of this weapon is equivalent to toting a mounted cannon into battle, complete with its ridiculous weight, staggering kick, and lavish use of quicksilver bullets. Such a monstrosity was doomed from the start, and indeed its development was cut short. Yet, against impossibly gigantic foes, it might be just the thing. This cannon is pretty insane as well, isn't it? In terms of damage, if you level it up. Or at least I think it was when the game first came out. Uh, hold on, what are you talking about here, cool man? I remember there being old map data for there being two buildings, but sometimes it's hard to trust cut content people because they exaggerate for easy content and don't show their sources. Okay. And when you ask about their sources and they show you, it's often absolute bullshit, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, just going off the game, like without knowing anything about cut content or anything, it does seem kind of weird how Bergenworth is presented, you know? They obviously build it up as this major location. Um, but then when you get there, it's fairly small. But then you also go to another part of Bergenworth, but in a different realm. With all these, with all the classrooms and stuff. So it's kind of like, huh. You might think, this is kind of weird. I wonder if it originally was supposed to be like one whole, one big building. 
I feel like that would have made for a, I feel I feel like that would have been a better way to present Bergenworth, honestly, you know? If instead of having it in the nightmare like that, that we got to see those areas when we arrived at the real Bergenworth. Not that I dislike how it's presented in the nightmare. But I think I would have preferred it if it's if we saw that area in the real Bergenworth and we just got like this giant college to explore. Um okay, where am I going? Okay, I think it's time to say hello to Volter. Oh. Exploring an empty college before transporting to the nightmare version could have been cool too. Yeah, like some real Silent Hill shit where you get to see the real college and then the the other world version of it. I do think it's cool how that, how that part of the college and the nightmare is like a transitory area between other nightmare realms. Like that is cool. It's kind of like a, um, a fork in the road. You know, one door at the end of the college leads to Mensis, the other one leads to the Nightmare Frontier. I do think that is sick. You know, it's like this college is floating in the cosmos and one door takes you to one realm, the other door takes you to the other. Like, I really do like that. But at the same time, I kind of wish the real Bergenworth was meatier, you know? I still love the real Bergenworth, though, when we get there. Like, it's a great mood. And it's kind of nice in its own way that it's small and subdued. Just Willem up there on his chair, chilling. Um. Oh, yeah, we have to go down further. Okay, yeah, we're not saying hello to Volter yet. Deeper into the Forbidden Woods we go. Love all the hats just hanging here. This scarecrow. Oh, hello. You can parry these guys, but it's kind of tricky. To know when it's hard to read their animations. Jesus. The snake that comes out of his hand there. Ooh! Well, let's see if we can get a good look at his hand. Do the animation. Do the thing. Oh, look at those fingers. <laughs> yeah, that's what I get. Ah, I'm going to they're going to put me all the way back as well, right? We have to we have a long way to run. Jesus, you really have to work for the next shortcut. Yeah, all the way back. Circus. No, don't you dare.
Hold. Whoa! Yeah, I wasn't far from it. Of course, I had to go fucking around in first person like an idiot. Damn curse. See you later. Eh, it doesn't take that long. Oh, he's about to pop. Ah, I wanted to get a close up. Uh, okay, let's not go fucking around. Let's get those echoes back. Shit. Uh, right. Oh, fuck. Oh, it's right around the corner here. Yeah. Here we go. an accomplished hunter, it would appear. <laughs> I am Volta, master of the League. Members of the League cleanse the streets of all the filth that spread about during the hunt. Like any half-decent hunter ought to, you know? Haven't you seen enough of these wretched beasts, freakish slugs and mad doctors? Sentence these fiends to death. With the help of your League confederates. What do you say? Why not join the League? Um, if I refuse, I can... I do have another opportunity to join, don't I? I do? Okay, just wanted to make sure. I want to see what he says if I refuse. Yes. I suppose... I should not force your will. But you are a hunter, and we'll see soon enough that on a night of the hunt, no, on any night, nothing out there deserves to live. Well then, you've seen enough out there. Yeah, actually, I have a change of heart. In the ranks of the League. Go on then. Yes, as a hunter well should. Commit this to heart. Our own carol rune, symbol of the League. Impurity. The night brims with defiled scum and is permeated by their rotten stench. Just think, now you're all set to hunt and kill to your heart's content. Hunt in cooperation with your fellows, your League confederates. <laughs> Love it. No, there is one thing you must know. By the oath of the League, those who bear its rune will see vermin. Vermin writhe deep within all filth and are the root of man's impurity. All vermin are to be crushed. The League exists to expunge all vermin, ridding us of any trace of human corruption. And so, until we are rid of all vermin, you must continue to hunt and kill. This bloody fate is ours alone. Do not expect the world to grasp our work, but remember, the Confederates will always have my blessing. And each other. Always. 
Love how Walter sounds like he's just barely keeping it together. He's bursting at the seams. He's about to transform at any moment. <laughs> I'd be pretty scared of Walter if I was in his presence, I think. exists to expunge all vermin, ridding us of any trace of human corruption. And so, until we are rid of all vermin, you must continue to hunt and kill. This bloody fate is ours alone. Do not expect the world to grasp our work. But remember, the Confederates will always have my blessing. And each other. Always. Always. Yeah, great voice. Let's take a look at the rune we got. A carol rune that transcribes inhuman sounds. This rune discovered inside the forbidden beast eater came to symbolize impurity and the oath of the league. Confederates of the League cooperate with hunters from other worlds and hunt to discover vermin. Vermin writhe within filth and are the root of man's impurity. Crush all vermin without hesitation. It's kind of reminiscent of the uh, formless Erden rune with that figure with the arms out. Kind of similar there with the arc and the central figure. Yeah, a really cool set he has as well. Love the cape. I wouldn't say this is a mistranslation exactly. Usually I don't, but the way impurity in the English is standing in for stagnation from the Japanese makes it more difficult to understand. It's not that vermin are the source of impurity. It's that vermin are the source of stagnation. Vermin makes you behave like a beast. And if you behave like a beast, you're incapable of evolving. Hence stagnating. Okay. Let me take a look at that rune again. Discovered inside the Forbidden Beast Eater. We come to learn that Volter is the Beast Eater. Right? Like, uh, in, when, we, when, we, when we get his, uh, his armor set, I think it refers to him as the Beast Eater. Or maybe it's when we summon him. He's called Volter the Beast Eater or something like that. Or was it his... Um, didn't he have, like, a partner as well that we learn about? I'm trying to remember stuff from the old hunters now. Kind of makes it seem like he is the impure one as well. You know, they're going out looking for vermin and the root of man's impurity. But this rune found within Walter came to symbolize impurity. Beast eating also sounds kind of impure as well. I remember when I first uh, played this, I, I was uh, wondering if the vermin was even supposed to be real. You know, I, I was kind of under the impression that it was like their own imaginings, you know? If you believe that you can see the vermin, you can. But it seems like the vermin is something that does actually exist within um, the people of this world, you know, those the, centi the little centipedes. Let's 
go outside. Walter long ago lost the ability to see vermin. You get that from the master's iron helm. Yeah, I'm sure we'll learn more about him as we uh, as we go. I think we'll be able to get his armor set. Maybe we. I I, I can't remember um, how you unlock it. Let's go back to the dream. Take a look at the insight shop. See if there's anything new. Oh, and Sangia, yeah, Yarnamite's favorite tale tells of a group of constables who once chased a beast back to Yarnum. All but one were killed. It was said that he killed and ate the beast in vengeance. This is implied how Walter earned his title, Beast Eater. Okay. Out of... out of vengeance. <laughs> that really paints a, uh, a brutal image. I think to some extent you can see what you want to see, like depending on your rune, you might see vermin in the blood, or you might see quicksilver, or you might see blood dregs. So in that sense, they're an, they're an, they're an illusion maybe, okay. Welcome home, good hunter. What is it you desire? Oh, yeah, bloody crow. Walter drops two different helmets. You get one for killing him early and the other for completing his quest line. That rings a bell. Very well. Let the echoes become your strength. Let me stand close. Now shut your eyes. That was how I interpreted it initially, Blood. But then when you actually see the vermin and you get that artwork and you see it physically within the world and you crush it, then I wasn't so sure. But yeah, maybe it is just as... Maybe it still is just something that is a delusion. I don't know. But yeah, at first I thought it, it definitely was just, it didn't exist, you know, that these were just madmen. You can actually get it without the rune a few times, but that might be a gameplay thing. Right, because of course you do need the you are supposed to need the rune as well, which is like this thing that you imprint into your head and memorize. Mm. Let's get a little bit more vitality and a bit more skill. Farewell, good hunter. May you find your worth in the waking world. If you're for if you force your brain to see something, you'll see it. Yeah, and that's that's a big part of what you're doing with these runes, you know, to even gain that impurity. Um, to gain that status of impurity, this is something you need to really recall and think and keep in your thoughts and your memory to lodge inside your head. Boosts max HP during co-op. Plus 2%. I mean, I may as well equip it. Why not? <laughs> 2 percent isn't great, is it? Uh, where am I going? Forbidden Woods.
The issue with thinking it's an illusion, in my opinion, is that vermin are just one kind of insect. The Japanese is simply insect, and there are a lot of other kinds that you see whether or not you have the room. If it were something in Bloodborne, it would be easier to get around it. But when you have places like Senpo and the Headless Ape and whatever, it just seems like a typical depiction of FromSoft's impurity. Right, but I guess you could argue that within the context of Bloodborne, it's a bit different. Given the, the use of insight and, um, and all of that. Anything else, Walter? Ah, how goes your hunt? Do not forget the League's mission. To cooperate with Confederates, find vermin, and stamp them out. Though it becomes difficult to reconcile things like the Bloodletting Beast with the Big Maggot or Lauren Silver Beasts, well, they could still be their own separate things, right? Right, Blad, but he's just referring to the to the to the whole theme of vermin throughout all the games. Or, you know, similar concepts. Corruption, stagnation, vermin, and the use of insects. Centipedes, all that. You know, that the, that this theme, generally speaking, is usually real in these games. That usually when the games deal with the vermin and insects and all that stuff, that it is, uh, in all other instances, it seems to be real. But yeah, I guess it's just that you get that sense from Walter that he like he feels deranged and it kind of feels like he's projecting onto other people. Or at least that's how I saw it anyway. It was like, huh, these vermin are actually real? Okay. You know, it just kind of feels like a story he concocted. You know, that only we, chosen few, can see these vermin writhing around in men. Only, only you and your League Confederates. Don't expect the world to grasp what we do, you know? Don't expect everyone else to understand. And Walter can't see them anymore. Yeah, like someone posted earlier. Kind of feels like a racism allegory. <laughs> Gonna be because of the maybe if he takes off the bucket. He has a hole in that bucket though. He should be able to see out that hole. I think what it might be trying to get at, especially some of the later descriptions, is that there's a need in these people to hunt and kill. And vermin are their justification for it, but they're choosing to see the impurity in the blood represented in this specific way. And that gives them what the game describes as boundless purpose. Yeah, there are probably a few different ways you can look at it.
I mean, I guess it would make sense for that vermin to be inhabiting the blood, you know? These people are getting fucked up with this blood ministration. Um, okay, uh, what are we doing? We're in the deepest parts of the woods now, and now we get to see these giant uh, graves. Ooh, and I just remembered, we get to see the little slugs on the backs as well. We were saying earlier that these are supposed to be Great One graves. That is never confirmed in the game, but it is in the art book. In the game, there is no description at all of these graves, I don't think. But I guess just you could infer with the fucking size of them. <laughs> they are great graves. And um, I guess all the slugs on the back would also imply that they're connected to great ones. Look at all those slugs. The phantasms, that's the word. I knew I wasn't, uh, I knew there was something I was forgetting about how they were actually described later. The phantasms, yeah. The empty phantasm shell, yeah. <laughs> I wonder if they're supposed to look deliberately phallic as well. <laughs> look at those big dick gravestones. Look at that. Nasty. Look. Oh, and the, uh, the little amygdala chestnuts. Yeah, this is another weird design we see here. Ooh, look, you can even see the body on this one. Look at that torso. No arms coming out, though. So what the hell happened here for there be, for there to be so many great one graves? And why did why did they shut this place off in the first place? What happened? Did Lawrence just not want people going to Bergenworth? Was it to seal off Bergenworth? Once he founded the church, he was like, "No, no, no, we're doing things my way now." Forget about Bergenworth. No one's no one's going to Bergenworth. I forget what I forget what information we have that's set in stone related to this.
the old adage being the password as well is interesting, given that that's the adage that Lawrence quickly ignored. Have I played this on the highest difficulty? Um, there are no difficulty levels in this game. Um, but there are NG plus cycles. Um, and I have done all the NG plus cycles. And I did do a level 4 playthrough where it, that's like a self-imposed challenge run where you play the game without leveling up at all. I did do that. Um, but yeah, they're, they're, you, you don't pick like easy, normal, hard or whatever at the start of these games. Yeah, that BL4 run was rough. <laughs> oh, wow, you're so good, dog. Is that sarcasm? If he was asking, did I play the game on its highest difficulty? What do you want from me? I don't think I was really tooting my own horn there too much. You know, I thought it was relevant to bring up NG plus cycles and other ways of making the game harder, even though there wasn't traditional difficulty levels. Fuck you, JMP. <laughs> Suck my balls. Um, let's see. I remember there being something interesting around here. Comment up above you might like. Hold on. I'm excited for Elden Ring at Crab. I'm getting pretty keen to see it now. Yeah, playing Bloodborne is definitely getting me a bit more excited. I've been, uh... But I've been ignoring all of the marketing and all of the hype and all of the trailers and all of the build-up. Because uh, I want it to feel... You know, I want it to be fresh. I don't want to see anything. I watched, like, the first trailer and that was it. And after that, I didn't want to see anything else. But, um, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Midnight release. I'm not sure if I'll be playing it on at midnight. Maybe it'll be the like the next day. Either way, I'll be playing it the day it releases. Whether it's the midnight, whether whether it's at midnight or later on during the day, we'll see. Uh, cool man. It might have been the opposite. Willem locked everyone out. It's his guard and his adage. Right. That would make sense, actually. You know, because like Lawrence using the old adage, that doesn't really make much sense, does it? If it's this, you know, if Lawrence is the one who ignores the adage. That, yeah. And they were only permitted to come back if they'd, if they'd stay true to the adage. And perhaps admit they were wrong. Lawrence in retaliation declared it forbidden ground. Yeah, I like that theory. That's the cool way to look at it. Oh, Jesus. Oh, God. Oh, no. Clear deep sea. Love how we always get these runes beside large bodies of water. Whenever we pick them up. I think that's usually the case anyway. Um, yeah, I don't think I'm going to kill all the snake balls here. Oh! Boop, 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 boop.
Um, I still need to play Dark Souls 2. It's the only game in the Soulsborne hero games that I haven't played. I played a little bit of it. I'll definitely stream it at some point. Maybe I'll do a whole... Maybe I'll do a Dark Souls trilogy playthrough or something in the future. Seems like people have eased up on it more as time has passed. Still, obviously, it still gets a lot of criticism, but I feel like uh, it has its lovers as well. Really cool, man. DS2 is your favorite. That's interesting. Didn't expect that. I thought I thought you would have been a, a DS1 purist. Well, not purist, but a uh, DS1 guy. Boring 90% of the time, but the 10% is so fucking good. <laughs> that sounds like something you'd say, actually, yeah. You just really like that 10%. I have not played um, Horizon. I wasn't, um, or rather, I, I could never, I, I never got into the first one. So, I don't think I'm going to pick up the second one, at least straight away. I think I'm going to watch some streams of it and see how I feel about it, watching it. And then maybe I'll pick it up if I like what I see. People were uh, talking about it here not so long ago. Have I played the Neo games? I have. I played the first one and I bought the second one, but I never finished it. I played like a few levels of it and then other stuff got in the way. I'd like to go back to Neo 2 at some point because I was enjoying it. I had mixed feelings on Neo 1. I had fun with it, but the enemy variety and shit um, wasn't so great. I know that was a common complaint as well that a lot of people had. Uh, ooh, three of them. Oh, nice. The range on that R2. The last game I watched someone play was Hadiful Boyfriend. It's a pigeon dating simulator. I know, I played it on stream back in the day. I'm a, I'm a Hadiful Boyfriend veteran. Classic. Um, no, I'm not really a Hadiful Boyfriend veteran, but I did play it on stream back in the day. Oh. oh, spitting through the other guy, really? Um, I don't have any of that stuff. Elixir. Ah, okay. I'm gonna die. Oh, Jesus!
What a mess. There better be a good item here, man. I bet this is going to be a complete waste. There is something. Deep Sea. Okay, a rune. What does Deep Sea even give me? Frenzy resistance. Okay, we might end up using that later in Mensis. Yeah, big meaty uh, frenzy res. I couldn't remember what that item was. Oh, fuck off. La la la. La la. La la la. Look at this big. Morning. He was best friends with this great one. God. I wish I could remember where all the like the key items were here. What's going on here? Oh yeah, he summons them, doesn't he? Oh no! Oh no! Nice. Is that gonna kill all the snakes? No. I have to go back up for the jump across the gap. Yeah, I remember there, there, there being one that you had to access, like, right from the top. Um, yeah, we'll go back up. Hey, what's up, young donkey? I think we're close to the bottom now. What is there to find here? Like what, um, I think there's like a, there's a set that's, that belongs to one of Willem's, um, bodyguards. There's something else. There's only a couple of things here. There's like one or two bits of attire, unique items. Oh. The Graveguard set, that was the one. 
It's just the Graveguard set and a few runes, okay. Yeah, all I really care about is the, the set. Yeah, this interesting little spot here. What are these supposed to be? Fireflies? Arcane shenanigans? Arcane sprites? Interesting that we see them here right next to the Celestial Emissaries. Which we find up here. Quite an unusual little area. Oh yeah, I love these ones, the sounds. Like the classic UFO sound effect. Ooh. Yeah, that's dangerous. Anti-clockwise metamorphosis. A secret symbol left by Carol, runesmith of Bergenworth. The twisted cross means metamorphosis. Rotated anti-clockwise, this rune boosts stamina. I can hear someone walking towards me. The discovery of blood made their dream of evolution a reality. Metamorphosis and the excesses and deviation that followed was only the beginning. The excesses. I love it. Excesses and deviations certainly did follow. That's for sure. That dream of evolution had some... had a few complications. I know we can drop down here from that point as well. Dream of evolution? Yes. Yep. <laughs> exactly. Um, okay. Where are we going? I want to get this grave guard set. Much of this story revolves around characters who wish to evolve and transcend humanity and become like gods. Uh, where am I going? Up here. Uh, Riggy with the 15 months. Thank you.
Who is evolving? Well, I might be evolving. Depending on the ending I get. Yeah, you'll see me evolve at the end of the game. what I'm looking for? Probably not. Nope. Such a maze, this place. Well, maybe it's not actually all that maze-like, but it's just very sprawling. Very wide. A lot of ground to cover. Bloody crow, guide me. Where am I going? I don't think we need to go up further than this, do we? How do I get to this graveyard set? Yeah, a bit lower. What's my least favorite area in Bloodborne? Ooh. Um. Mechanically, gameplay-wise, like on a pure gameplay level... Maybe the Nightmare Frontier? Nightmare Frontier might be one of the least interesting. Nightmare Frontier for you as well. Yeah, I mean, like, I guess there are a few areas that aren't, like, that don't have an awful lot going on gameplay-wise, but... Um, you know, like, the Upper Cathedral isn't anything really to write home about. But it's it's carried completely by the atmosphere. So it's still a really enjoyable area, you know? The vibes are so good that it just doesn't really matter, you know? That the area is fairly simple. Or, you know, lacking in complexity. I love Yahargul. <laughs> but you probably know that already. Going back to Yahargul as well when the Blood Moon is out and the doors are open. Uh, as, as you approach the One Reborn fight, how the chanting gets louder and louder and louder as you get closer to the One Reborn. That's my whole jam. But yeah, in terms of like raw level design and combat, it isn't it isn't anything too great, I guess. Um We deplore <laughs> Yargul, really? Uh, you gotta let the vibes carry it, man. You need to embrace the vibes. I think I'm at the place. Yeah, I recognize it. Here we go. The Graveguard Mask. And hopefully that's the rest of the set. Beautiful. 
Very creepy looking mask. Mask of doors. Graveguard of the forbidden woods. His pale countenance mimics the labyrinth watchers. Willem kept two loyal servants back at Bergenworth. When they were sent into the labyrinth, they encountered the eldritch truth and went mad. One became the password gatekeeper, while Doris became a graveguard of the forest. Both remained loyal, even in madness. So sick. Interesting that the mask mimics the Labyrinth Watchers. Like, I wonder, was this just something that they found when he was... Something he found down in the Labyrinth and he just kept wearing it? Went mad? Countless bloodied ritual tools hang from its back. Both remained loyal, even in madness. Covered in the blood of untidy rituals. Cool. Okay, I think we can... My, I can just drop it. I think we can uh, exit this area now. Next up, Shadows of Yarnum. Let's see how this goes. Dissipating Lake. Same description as the other lake rune. They all have the same description. That was messy. Burned himself alive. I'm still here, Volfossi. Yeah. I'm going to need to do some big sessions for this to finish it in time before Elden Ring. Still have a few days left. We should be good. We are. Oh, we can summon Henrik here now. Cool. Forgot about that. Another clockwise metamorphosis. Okay, I was going to go back and level up, but fuck it. Let's just go straight into the fight. 44k echoes, I can get them back if I lose them. We have 21 vials, we're good.
Love the entrance here. The two graves toppled over. Forming an arch. Here we go. Let's see how well I remember this fight. That wasn't good. I tried to play it like Dark Souls 3 there and sprint while locked on around in a circle, but you can't do that. <laughs> Only time in the game I tried to do it. This would have worked really well there. They get new attacks, second phase. Ooh. Come on now, that's not nice. Please fuck off. Nice, one down. Um, who's next? Oh! <laughs> Jesus! That long arm of yours is really nasty, man. That is so cheap. Well, I don't know if it's cheap or not, but I don't like it. Come on. Yeah. Come on, do something with that sword of yours. Quick. Disappointing. That should have been a one-shot. Maybe I should have healed instead of rolled. Ah. I'm disappointed in myself. All right. All the way back down. Yeah, that long lunge is nasty. Can't remember what the fastest way is here. You know, we opened that sh weird shortcut, that gate. I think I can drop down there from somewhere. from here. Probably too high up here. Yeah. I'm here. Okay. Should have had him. Did the hard part. Got got them down to two. Got rid of the first guy. All right. Here we go. Ah! 
Uh-oh. Okay, let's not fuck it all up now. Let's get those echoes. I just remember I always went for the fire guy first. I don't even remember why. Yeah, lure them over here and then I can quickly run up to him. Nice. Maybe I'll go for him first. If I get up close to him, he might not use his big lunge. Oh, what an asshole. Oh, he has one as well. Okay, now we just bully him. I think it was the, the flaming sword guy that I used to leave until last. I think it's easier to bully him than this guy. Yeah, it definitely is. Oh, man. Okay. Blood Rapture. Let's take a look. Thanks for the claps, guys. Blood Rapture. A carol rune that transcribes in human sounds. Blood Rapture is the raw euphoria of the warmth of blood. It restores HP with visceral attacks. One of the darker hunter techniques. This rune resonates with servants of the queen, carrier of the child of blood, who yearns for their queen's blood with little hope of requitement. For them, they find solace in blood rapture that serves as a surrogate for their desires. This is a really interesting description. 
This has all sorts of shit going on. Getting back to that, to the raw euphoria that the hunters feel on the hunt. The raw euphoria of the warmth of blood. Connecting that to visceral attacks being one of the darker hunter techniques. Obviously it makes sense that we got this from the shadows of Yarnum. The servants of the queen. This whole idea of surrogates again as well. Finding out about the great ones and how they... Uh, Long for a surrogate child. In the cut stuff, you used to be able to get Annalise's blood as a special reward. So I imagine it was the same way for Yarnum and her servants. The hand transformation on Viscerals is such a cool detail. Right, yeah, yeah, I love the uh, the hand animation. Hey, we never spoke to the the um, the Dark Beast earlier in the woods. We need to go back. Look above the doorway to Bergenworth. I just left the area, Bloody Crow, but I will when I go back. Um, I think I missed out on some subs. Martian, if you're still there, thank you for gifting a sub to Powerglass and to Leslie. Uh, Riggy with the 15 months. Rocco with the 42. Um, hey, it's Richie as well. Thank you, everyone. As a substitute for the Queen's blood, since they can't get that, yeah. Uh, German, are you out back? Nope. Let's take a look at the runes again. Dissipating Lake. Bolt damage reduction. Frenzy. Slow res. More echoes from visceral attacks. Ooh. Max vials plus three. Let's go for... Ooh, visceral attacks restore HP. Plus 200, that's nice. I think I'm going to go for more Blood Echoes. Let's take a look at the gems. become your strength. Let me stand close. Now shut your eyes. Hmm. Oh, hey, Sniper Wolf, I didn't mean to time you out. <laughs> that was a misclick. I wanted to, I was clicking on Cool Man's link. Uh, hold on. What is your fucking name? I Sniper with a three Wolf I X X Ball Sucking Legend 420. Blaze it. 
Hold on. Alright, Wolf, you're unbanned. Sorry, that was a misclick. Um, let's see. I think I'm just gonna keep going on that skill. 40 is when you start to get diminishing returns, isn't it? AC with the 16 months. Thank you. Yeah, let's bring that up to 40. Go for a bit of strength then, maybe. Hunters have to of course I do, isn't that farewell, good hunter. May you find your worth in the waking world. Okay, let's see. Oh, let's take a look at the insight shop. It's been a while since we checked. We might have new items. <laughs> No, still just Henrik's and Gascoigne's. Okay. Okay. Um, I'm not sure what I want to do now. I don't think I want to go to Bergenworth yet. Because I, when I go to Bergenworth, I want to complete Bergenworth. And I don't want to bring about the Red Moon yet. I don't think. I mean, I guess we could. I thought there was something I wanted to do before triggering that part of the game. F yeah, like the Nightmare Frontier. We could always save the Nightmare Frontier until later, though, as well. Um, hmm. I already got that dialogue with Gilbert about Bergenworth. Uh, I definitely don't want to do Kanehurst yet. I don't want to do the DLC yet. Nightmare Frontier. Hmm. Once I cross over to Mensis, I think I uh, like it's when we cross over to Mensis. That'll be the final portion of the game. We'll do Mensis and then Garman and the last few bosses right after that. I think after the One Reborn might be a good place to stop and do all that other stuff. Stop at, stop after the One Reborn and then do all the optional areas plus the DLC. Go over to the, go over to the Nightmare. Go over to Kanehurst. Parl. I guess I could do Parl now. Yeah, let's see. Let's see how Parl goes. I'm not sure how how powerful he is. I can't remember on new game how I'll be balanced with him. Parl was a fight that I never really learned. You know, I always just kind of bullshitted my way through it. Just roll like a madman under his legs. Start sweeping for the legs. Yeah, then we can go say hello to Jora.
such a cool design. Oh, you poor thing! Oh, no! Oh! Oh! I should have fought him earlier. Oh, he killed me! <laughs> oh, that's the thanks I get. I was just trying to give him a, you know, I didn't want to kill him. I wanted to stop and take in the music and the vibes. Alright, no mercy this time, Parl. Man, he looks cool, though, when he does that big charge up. Okay. Uh, really? Okay. I'm gonna die. Right, some of those attacks are hard to see coming. God, what a mess. <laughs> Just about. The Spark Hunter badge. Let's take a look. Badge crafted in secret by Archibald, the infamous eccentric of the healing church, for his friends. Interesting. Archibald was fascinated by the blue sparks that emanate from the hides of the Dark Beasts and dedicated his life to its artificial reproduction in a style of inquiry that incidentally clo closely followed the methodology of Bergenworth. Cool.
All right, now let's creep up behind Jura. Jura really likes when you creep up behind him. It's the only thing he accepts. Oh, hey, one thing we never uh, spoke about. Ooh, that's a nice shot of the moon from here. Um, one thing we never spoke about was the, um, the messengers here. The strange depiction of the messengers. Like little birds with angel wings. Look at this one up here as well. I'm pretty sure that one is supposed to be a messenger in some form as well. Which looks closer to the statues that you see here. Really weird. I think you only see this symbol here as well. This kind of griffin or whatever it's supposed to be. Kind of interesting to have any depiction of the messengers, you know? Because it seems like you can only really, like only special people can see them. But, I mean, I guess that goes for other depictions of great ones and stuff as well, like the Amygdala statue. You know, I thought only dreamers could see the messengers. Uh, what was I doing? Up this way. Did I get the rifle spear and the armor set? I believe I did, yeah. I got everything here. Like the, uh, the, 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 the charred set, is that what you're referring to? I'm not sure if we actually read the description of this when we picked it up. I don't think we did. One of the staple articles of hunter attire fashioned at the workshop. A product of the scourge of the beast that once plagued old Yarnum and culminated in the town's fiery cleansing. The cape's dampness makes it highly resistant to fire. Wearers of this attire hunted down victims of the scourge who survived the raging flames and stench of singed blood. More weird messenger statues. did you get in here? Uh, it's no matter. What brings you to old Yarnum? Uh, I've no interest in matters further up. But you must not disturb this place. The beasts do not venture above and mean no harm to anyone. If you still insist on hunting them, then I will hunt you first. You understand me? Hunt the beasts of old Yarnum. Spare the beasts of old Yarnum. Alright, I'll spare them. Yes, 
Very good. I no longer dream, but I was once a hunter too. There's nothing more horrific than a hunt. In case you fail to realize, the things you hunt, they're not beasts. They're people. One day you will see. Hmm. It's time you got going. But first, a farewell gift. I have no use for it anyway. And the powder keg badge. Badge crafted by the powder kegs, the heretics of the workshop. The powder keg's adoration of complex design and big booms culminated in weapon designs that contrast with those traditionally of the workshop. The late powder kegs, bless their souls, had a motto. If a weapon ain't got kick, it just ain't worth it. Bless their souls is an interesting little phrase to throw in there. The powder kegs bless their souls. What is it? Surely I need not repeat myself. Go, I Go, say. Go, I say. Yeah, I remember that. You have the whole night to dream. Make the best of it. So we find out now that Jura was once like us, a dreamer. Just like Eileen. He was once bound to the hunter's dream. But not anymore. Now he wants to protect the beasts. He sees the humanity inside them. Go, I say. Uh, it's this, the same guy who voices Marvelous Chester in Dark Souls. What is it? Surely I need not repeat myself. Go, I say. You have the whole night to dream. Make the best of it. Yeah, I like his hat as well. It's like a slight variation on the traditional hunter hat. It's like an ashen version of it. Looks all singed up there. The eye covering as well. Um, yeah, cool man. Let me just check what you're saying here. Jorah is one of my favorite characters because he's almost the opposite of Valter, and the inversion of the pro of the projection elsewhere in the game. Yeah. He's uncommonly kind, so instead of seeing his own beasthood in humans, uh, he sees his own humanity. Yeah, yeah, it's nice to have a character like him to, to contrast. The powder kegs aren't the, the smartest hunters. That's what they're really getting at with the, with the bless their souls remark. Yeah. It does have that kind of feel to it. Like, God love them. The little idiots. <laughs> oh, bless them. Wouldn't they think just that? With their crazy antics. Okay, let's go back to the Hunter's Dream.
both Jorah and Maria sitting atop a clock tower. Yeah, yeah, I wonder if uh, that's intentional or just a coincidence. What don't you like about Maria, cool man? A bit over the top, like, yes, yeah, she is, uh, quite bombastic. Self-insert OC. What do you mean OC? Original character? I'm not sure what you mean by self-insert OC, though. Welcome home, good hunter. Like a fanfic that's way too cool. I had a feeling that's kind of what you were... I had a feeling that was your, gonna be your uh, response. Yeah, I can... I, I kind of do get those vibes as well. I do like her, though. Very well. <clears throat> Let the echoes become your strength. Let that they play up the cool factor a bit much with her. That you think that's like a little bit... Uh, it feels like a, just a little bit detached from the rest of the tone of the game. Like she's just too cool. <laughs> I do love her scene though. The uh, like lying there dead in the chair. Yeah, I don't know. I think I do still quite like Maria. A corpse should be left well alone. That's a classic line, man. The double meaning. I also don't think her story is very clean because you find her as a caretaker, but it wants but it wants to tell you the story of her as a hunter. And it feels like neither of them get fleshed out enough. Okay. Too much spectacle. Hmm, I'm not sure if I agree with that, but interesting take. Okay. Cool man's just jealous. Yeah, she's too cool. Um, okay. What do I want to go for? More strength? More strength? Vitality? A bit more vitality. Or endurance. May you find your worth in the waking world. Everything in Bloodborne is edgy and cool. I really wouldn't call much of the game edgy, but I guess different people have different definitions for edgy. For me, if it's, if to be edgy, you have to be like, kind of like over, really over the top, I guess. And cool in like a really hammy, self-aware, cheesy kind of way, you know? Like Devil May Cry shenanigans. Um, that kind of stuff, you know? That's mainly what I would consider to be edgy. Yeah, like I might act a little bit edgy with my uh, with my cane and whip sometimes. You know, you can definitely you, there's you can definitely be a bit edgy in Bloodborne for sure. But when it comes to like the the characters and the general tone, I don't really think of that as edgy.
Um, okay. I think what I like about Jorah that I don't really like about Maria is that Jorah is portrayed like he was naive and not very smart. But with Maria, it's just, she's such a good person, right? Okay. <laughs> yeah, I guess, I guess there, there is a bit of uh, a self-righteousness when it comes to how... Maria is written, which is maybe a little bit unusual, and not typical, for how the games generally handle their characters. I don't know. Bloodborne is the epitome of edgy to me. Well, really, I just think the word edgy is a fucking dumb word that doesn't really have any meaning. Um, so, I mean, I guess so. I don't know. What the fuck does edgy mean? It's a bullshit internet word. Uh, that's, you know, broadens as the years go by. <laughs> it's a meme word. I, I mean, like, what does it even mean? My reading of it over the years is like, you know, kind of just... For like, really over-the-top, cool characters. I'd mainly associate it with, like, DMC characters, or MGS4 Raiden, or... You know... Or, like, overly melodramatic emo boys. Stuff like that, you know? Bloodborne characters get dark and melancholic and dramatic in that sort of way, but just the tone of it, just given the tone of it, I wouldn't call it edgy, you know? It seem, it feels more um, real, I guess. To me. The emotions that are derived from it don't make me go, oh, so edgy. I don't know. There's something kind of uh, juvenile about edginess, you know? I guess I guess that's another thing. There's something just kind of schlocky and juvenile about the term edgy. So when I hear Jorah talk about beasts and stuff, I'm not like, oh, so edgy. I would just kind of feel like a dumb reaction to... Have, you know what? What a character says just doesn't really work. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. <clears throat> but again, it's a fucking bullshit meme word. I don't know. But I don't know what it really means. I don't. I don't know what the definition of the word is. Um, okay. Um, what are we going to do? Nightmare Frontier? Mm. Nightmare Frontier? Bergenworth, Nightmare Frontier, Bergenworth. Uh, I don't know. Let's go. Well, I don't think there's going to be anything new at Cathedral Ward if we go back there. Fuck it. Let's just go to Bergenworth and we'll do all the optional stuff after One Reborn. Yeah, I think that's what we'll do. The Forbidden Grave. Always skip Nightmare Frontier. Yeah, it's probably my least favorite area. I do like the Amygdala fight, though, and I love the design of the place. With the graves, and I like the sky. The beautiful sky in the Nightmare Frontier. 
which I think I think the the hunter's nightmare has the same sky or a similar kind of sky. Those really thick clouds, those thick smoky clouds. But yeah, gameplay wise, just progressing through the area isn't really all that interesting. Feels very kind of samey. Um, okay. Right, okay, cool, man. I love this little section here. Just the slow little walk up to Bergenworth. Or just this small little section of woods that lead up to it. There's some unusual uh, statues around here as well, I think. From what I remember. Got to do the slow, edgy RP walk. Be as edgy as possible here. Maximum edge. Ooh, hello. Hello. Oh, these guys. Garden of Eyes is the official name for these things, I think. Oh, yeah, they, they, uh, they hold these weird stones. Let's see if we can get a look at it. Yeah, there it is. Look at this little rock that they hold, with the image of a spider on it. With two big eyes, very similar to the eyes that they themselves have. And we'll be fighting a big, big spider at the end of this area. They have a weird attack as well, their grab attack. Um, is where they, like, relay some intense shrieking sound. And I think the sound is supposed to come from the from that ball. They grab you and they hold the ball up to your ear and the sound comes from the ball, I think. I think that's, that's what's trying to be communicated with that attack. Or maybe I'm misremembering. But I think maybe that sound during their grab attack is supposed to come from this spider ball. But I could be wrong. The suspicious beggar! Can we fight the suspicious beggar after we fight Rom? Look at this weird shit. This melted statue. I think he leaves after Rom. Okay, we might take a quick detour before we fight Rom then. Bergenworth. One of those moments where I wish I could just play this whole thing again for the first time.
Let's uh, let's let this guy do his grab attack. Ah, Jesus! Yeah, hear that intense sound? I don't think he holds the rock up to my head or anything. But that weird sound. <laughs> Stormy sounds. Thunderous sounds. Very close. Arcane Lake. I think you can hear his rocking chair creak from underneath. More of those things getting ready to ambush me. Willem's servants, I guess. Oof, the atmosphere here, man. So good. Getting to see the moon so up, so big, you know? It's usually so small off in the distance after Amelia when you look up to the sky. Once it transitions to night. But at Bergenworth, the moon is close. As close as you ever see it. I think some people were disappointed that you didn't get more dialogue from Willem. But uh, I thought that was great. You know, you're hearing all about this Master Willem, this big figure within the lore. And then you finally get to him and you see him, you can find him. But not a word out of him. He's on another plane. Oh, it's actually way closer in the Nightmare of Mensis. Really, I, I couldn't remember. Although, do you see the do you see a pale moon in Mensis, or is it the Blood Moon? I think it's the Pale Moon, isn't it? That's interesting. Is it supposed to be the same moon? Or is it supposed to be a different moon? Because you're in you're in a nightmare, right? So maybe it's supposed to be a different moon. And then you have the blood moon out in the quote unquote real world. I guess it wouldn't really make sense for the nightmare of Mensis to, to share this moon, right? If the nightmares are all like completely separate realms. The hunter's nightmare has a possessed moon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember that weird shit. When it uh when the when it disappears after you beat the orphan.
Thought it was the sun in the hunter's nightmare. Yeah, it's really hard to know what the fuck you're looking at in the hunter's nightmare. It kind of looks like a... Uh, like a, the, the, the dial of a clock as well. You know, the holes in it around the side. It kind of looks like the astral clock tower. The, uh, the clock dial or whatever it's called. That's what I always thought it looked like when I first saw it. I was like, wow, that really looks a lot like, a, like the clock tower. I'm not sure if that's intentional. I think it might be. Fuck you. Shitty ass Christmas tree. Oh, Great One's Wisdom. The first time we find Great One's Wisdom. Right in front of the water here. It's so cool. From foreshadowing. We're right beside a Great One. Fragments of the lost wisdom of the Great Ones. Beings that might be described as gods. Used to gain insight. At Bergenworth, Master Willem had an epiphany. We are thinking on the basest of planes. What we need are more eyes. Legendary. Vintage Master Willem. Yeah, you can hear the, the creaking of his chair here as well. At least I thought you could, a few seconds ago. I can't hear it anymore. I definitely heard it a few seconds ago. There we go, he's creaking again. Yeah, and again. Cool. Hey, those are the first sedatives that we find. Liquid medicine concocted at Bergenworth. Calms the nerves. Those who delve into the arcane fall all too easily to madness. And thick human blood serves to calm the frayed nerves of these inquisitive minds. Naturally, this often leads to a reliance on blood ministration. So this is just regular old classic human blood. No additives. Just classic human blood used to calm down the nerves. Untainted. Your blood kind of boils and shit when you frenzy, so you, di so you dilute it with this. We have some frenzied uh, cold blood here, don't we? Bubbling. This manifestation of madness comes from a mind teetering on the very brink, but has a sane mind ever produced anything of true significance. Love that image of the Great One's wisdom as well. Just slugs bursting out of the skull. 
the regular madman's knowledge is just one. Slug Afro. Boy, time to jewel. Wow. Oh, ho, 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 ho. okay. How do you like that? So she has that, uh, what's it called? The Rose Marinus. If I remember correctly, she can fuck you up with that as well if you're not careful. Nope, that's how you do it. Nope, like that. There you go, almost. Nope, that's how you do it. Try again. There you go. Ooh, better. That's just cheating. I give you an F for that performance. Nice try, though. <laughs> I tried to dodge into that. From what I remember, that's the best way to deal with that. Wait until the last second and then dodge into it. But I got killed before I saw the dodge. That moon. Man, the vibe here is just immense. All right, let's go. You gonna do your call beyond again, whatever it's called? Oh, the damage on that thing. Woo. What's that called again? Augur of Abreatus? That's Augur of Abreatus, I think. Fuck you. Oh, fuck. Crazy damage that does. On It got me on the counter hit there as well. The first one is a, was a call beyond. And then the se and that, that second big slug arm thing, that's Augur of Abreatus, I think. Hey, what's up, Lagood? I feel like I haven't seen you in a long time. How's it going?
Fuck off, Christmas tree. Showed up to the last Bloodborne stream? I apologize if I don't remember. Ah, you bitch. Should have had you last time. That choir set is pretty slick. Alright, let's go. <laughs> That's such a troll, that Rose Marinus. Go on, do another one. Depth of range that has as well. Fucked it up. Too early. Surprised that didn't kill me. How did that not kill me? Nice. Three blue elixirs. Um. I think we could have found a couple of these in the Forbidden Woods. Um, dubious liquid medicine used in strange experiments conducted by high ministers of the healing church. A type of anesthetic that numbs the brain. Hunters able to retain consciousness by force of will make use of a secondary effect of the medicine, which dilutes their presence while standing still. Stealth camo. Cool. Here we have these uh, eyeballs. Lots of eyeballs. More eyeballs over here. Ooh, actually, are those eyeballs? Or are those other organs? Kind of less clear. Eyeballs, I think. More eyeballs over here. Lots of nice tonics and stuff here. Some more eyeballs. More eyeballs. Some eyeballs over here too. Uh, pearl slug. Is that a regular item? 
No, it's a uh, chalice material, isn't it? Yeah, here it is. Pearl slug. Material used in a holy chalice ritual. Of all the strange life forms that reside in the nooks and crannies of the old labyrinth, the slugs are clear signs of the left behind great ones. That's why we see them covering the, the graves, the great one graves. Clear symbol of the Great Ones. The slug one? What did they what did they fuck up? There's like a typo. Oh yeah, of the all the strange. Wow. I'm not sure if I ever noticed that before. I just my my brain corrected it. I don't think there are too many typos in this, are there? I feel like I can't think of too many or I, I haven't noticed many. The spider hides all manner of rituals, certain to reveal nothing, for true enlightenment need not be shared. I love how we get that note about the Bergenworth spider after Gascoigne, like way back, way before any of that comes to pass. And now it comes back again. Student uniform. Uniform of the students of Bergenworth, a bygone institute of learning. Features a thick cape. The healing church has its roots in Bergenworth and naturally borrows heavily from its uniform design. The focus not on knowledge or thought, but on pure pretension would surely bring Master Willem to despair. If only he knew. So Willem never even got to find out about Lawrence and the Healing Church and all of that madness they're getting up to over there in Yarnum with the blood. Willem's been living in, a, in on another plane for Lord knows how long. Or maybe just nobody ever told him. Maybe he just didn't have that much contact with anyone from the outside world. You would think word would have traveled his way. When the red moon hangs low, the line between man and beast is blurred. And when the great ones descend, a womb will be blessed with child. So, getting lots of little bits of foreshadowing for what's to come. Rom hiding the Mensis ritual. What will be revealed once we kill Rom? When it's revealed, this red moon hanging low. And then Queen Yarnum's womb being blessed with the child, Murgo. Or maybe Ariana's womb being blessed. Or fake Yusefka. Lunarium key. Key to the Lunarium facing the lake on the second floor of Bergenworth College. In his final years, Master Willem was fond of the lookout and the rocking chair that he kept there for meditation. 
In the end, it is said he left his secret with the lake. Interesting, you know, if, if Willem was the one to, like, set up this thing with Rom guarding the ritual. Interesting that he didn't, that he would, that he didn't know about Lawrence. But he was. Or maybe Willem didn't have anything to do with, with Rom. You would think that that secret was Rom, right? That that was Willem's doing. A way to... To try and prevent us from doing what we're doing. I don't know. How do we... How do you look at... How do you interpret all that? What does that mean? What was Willem... What did Willem do? What was Willem trying to do? Probably gonna die. Oh no. Oh, that's frenzy, right? Fuck off. Empty phantasm shell. Empty invertebrate shell that is said to be a familiar of a great one. The healing church has discovered a great variety of invertebrates, or phantasms as they are called. Shells with slime still harbor arcane power and can be rubbed on weapons to imbue them with their strength. I never really thought about it this way, but if Willem locked everyone out because he knew they were going to fuck up, it fits that he'd have this great one hidden in the lake which stops the nightmare from destroying the city. Right. Like putting a limit on what the church can accomplish with their misplaced ambitions. What is it preventing as well? Preventing people from accessing the Nightmare of Mensis? Do we need to see... It's hiding the Mensis ritual. Right. And it prevents us from... Prevents us from contacting the moon presence. Ultimately. You know, like, ultimately, what is he trying to stop? Not exactly preventing the moon from being beckoned, but in practice, right... One second. Neat fact about that attack. When the bug thing mounts you, it pulls out a stone. Sail, I was just talking about that earlier. Um, I don't think he pulls out the stone. I, I was theorizing about this when we first entered Bergenworth. Um, I'm not sure if that's what's happening. But he doesn't put the stone, like, right up to your head. And I think he's always carrying the stone. I don't think the stone just pops out during that animation. I think he's always carrying the stone. You can look at it up close when they're dead on the ground as well. I was looking at it earlier. 
but I think that would be a, that's I think that is a cool idea that somehow the, the the sound is emanating from that stone. That's what the stone is for. Really interesting that it has like the image of a spider on it as well, and those things are very spider-like, very amygdala-like. Seems to be a bit of a theme in this area. The spiders, the spider-looking enemies, the spider stone, the spider boss at the end of it. Yeah, it's weird. Um, okay. Let's go back to the Hunter's Dream. Back to the forest. Um, to say hello to the Dark Beast. And then we'll come back and fight Rom. Yeah, you can, you can see the stone. You can see the stone now. Yeah, he's always holding on to it. All the eyes on it as well. Wonder if it's supposed to be a depiction of Rom. Kind of look, kind of looks like Rom. All the eyes on top of its body as well, very similar to Rom. Or like the eyes above the eyes. But I mean, I guess these things also have eyes all over their heads. Yeah, I don't know. It's really weird. Okay, okay, I have my bearings. Jesus. <laughs> I'm just looking for this lamp. Alright, back to the dream. Back to the Forbidden Woods. Where do I want to go? Forbidden Woods. Can I add the emote that Crow showed to the channel? Hold on. Oh! <laughs> yeah, sure, I'll add that. There we go. It might take a minute or two to add. Oh my god, that's amazing. <laughs> Okay. Um. Hey, Walter. Oh, nice one, Fire Lord. I hope you have fun with it. How many subs do I need for a new emote slot? I'm scared to look at my sub count. I haven't looked at it in months. So I have no idea. Probably around a thousand. I probably need around a thousand subs or something like that for a new slot. Um, okay, where am I going? That animation. Uh, 
I will. Um, oh, with regards to the to the emotes, um, to the emote that I just added, those are BTTV emotes. So I have like a hundred slots for those, and I can mix and match and you know replace some. But yeah, for my channel emotes, yeah, I need a load of subs. Uh, hold on one second, guys. Is ROM please? Um, is it up? Is it active? Right. Uh, how? Where the fuck do I fight this guy again? He's in this building somewhere. Oh, I know. I know. I know. I know. Yeah, we drop down here. We climb up here. Yeah, I remember. What's going on here? Oh! Blimey, don't scare me like that. On a night like this, I took you for a monster. Oh, thank the stars, you're fairly normal. Was it you who put down that awful beast? Ooh, that thing had me trembling, frozen in my boots. And then you came along. <laughs> well, if you're a hunter, then would you know of any safe havens? Love how casual this guy is. Oh, blimey. Casually eating a child here. Casually eating a whole family. Love how he has the, the beast pose. I think that's the same pose that you have when you use, uh, when you transform. Oh yeah, of course not. I should have known. This whole place is falling apart once again. It's the curse of Yarnum. Um... If I tell him to go somewhere and then attack him, but then die, he won't just teleport to Erden Chapel or Yosefka's clinic, will he? Right after I aggro him, there's no chance he'll ever leave. Yeah, I think once you aggro him and get in a fight with him, he'll never leave. Because I'd like to get the dialogue, if possible, you know, where I tell him to go somewhere and then attack him. Yeah, I, w I, I will fight him, but I'd, I want to see if I can get the dialogue where I tell him to go somewhere and still fight him. And have the chance to die and come back and fight him again. Fuck it, I'm just going to attack him to be safe. Have you got a screw loose? Or is it your animal issues? You hunters have got more blood on your hands. Here we go. I I really like to heal. Yeah. 
Yeah. Oh, fuck off. Yeah, I don't know your patterns at all. It's very frustrating. <laughs> what would you know? There it is. What would you know? He sounds kind of cute when he says that. Ah! Go on, give me a hug. You deranged cannibal. What did we get from a beast? Yeah. One of the early Carol runes, as well, one of the, as well as one of the first to be deemed forbidden. The discovery of blood entailed the discovery of undesirable beasts. This poor family. If you send him back to Erden Chapel, he just ends up eating all of the other residents. In case you've never played this before. That's what happens. If you send him to Yosefka's clinic, though, fake Yosefka fucks him up, doesn't she? Fake Yosefka turns him into an alien. What a badass. Fake Yosefka is not to be fucked with. That's amazing. I wonder how she managed that. Oh, yeah, we have to attack Walter here, don't we? In order for his friends to appear. That's the fight that I was thinking of. The NPC hunters that you fight here. They're just Walter's bros. Oh, wait, no, it's you, you, ha you have to hand in vermin. Right, 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 right. Welcome. What is it? Very well, let me. A bit more endurance. Couldn't hurt. Farewell, good heart. All right, let's do it. The vacuous spider. Very nice outfit, Willem. 
really looking the part. Moon bathing, yeah. <laughs> Love it. Just points over there. You shouldn't be leading me over there, Willem. If you want to keep your secret, if Rom is your secret. And the guy that says he's waiting for someone to unlock his secret or something like that. And he wants it to be unlocked? Oh, wait, hold on. Let's take a look at his socks. You think this is fancy? Wait till you see this. Look at those socks. <laughs> Pretty big feet as well. The little laugh out of them, out of him there. <laughs> Love his staff as well with those little seeds or whatever they're supposed to be. Some weird shit coming out of his neck as well. Sense burners. Love the detail, the mask. I a secret symbol left by Carol, runesmith of Bergenworth. A transcription of I, as spoken by left-behind great ones. Allows one to make additional discoveries. Eyes symbolize the truth Master Willem sought in his research. Disillusioned by the limits of human intellect, Master Willem looked to beings from higher planes for guidance and sought to line his brain with eyes in order to elevate his thoughts. Classic. This plural is probably wrong, should be left behind great one, abreatus. Right. That makes sense. Because Abriatus is, is described as the left behind great one in other uh, descriptions as well, I think, right? I don't think we know of any others that are described in that same way. Hey, welcome home, Storm. We don't know anything about Carol. No, just that Carol was a master of making these runes. And that's about it. That's all we know. More items from fallen enemies. Additional discoveries. All right, here we go.
<laughs> what a design. Oh my god. I love how he has these two primary eyes as well. Which makes him look kind of human in a weird way. He has that normal looking face. <laughs> well, maybe not, not normal looking face, but... You know, like a the shape of the the shape of his face there has a kind of human look to it. Yeah, he's just covered in eyes. Love the detail, all of them rolling around. Even on his body here, he has loads of eyes. These eyes are all still though. None of these are rolling around. I don't think, anyway. These glowing flowers. His tail is pretty sweet as well. The frames struggle a bit on the tail when you're this close. No, Emix. Did I call Rom a he? Did I refer to, to Rom as a he? Yeah, she. Rom is a girl, yeah. That mouth animation is amazing. Alright, I hate to do it. Okay, how did this go again? Let's, um... Yeah, let's go for Rom. And we'll take out all the babies in the next phase, maybe. Yeah. Those babies aren't to be fucked with. They get you with that counter damage. <laughs> I was being greedy there, just going straight for Rom instead of clearing out the babies first. If you want to be really careful, that's what you should do. Clear out the babies, then go for the body. Yeah, they hit really hard. Okay, round two. Yeah, those dive bombs. Okay, let's take it slow then. Ooh, love the eerie strings in this fight and the theme. Oh, those screeches. Fuck you, fuck everyone. There's the dive bomb. That's the one shot. I, ah, fuck it. No, I'm getting greedy. Greed!
you bitch. I'm gonna get dive bombed here. Ooh. Okay. <laughs> now it's just you and me, Mrs. Rom. Let's see how you like my fire whip. Come on. There you go. No! No! I... You can... Oh! She summoned another group there? What the fuck? Oh yeah! Oh shit! Um, she has other attacks. I forget how this works. Okay, 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 okay. I completely forgot what I used to do for that attack there. I wanted to see if I could just run at a normal speed across from her. But no, I used to sprint. I used to sprint at full speed to avoid that, I think. That's definitely one way of avoiding it. I think you can probably avoid it just by rolling as well. I used to always sprint. I think that might have been something that they changed with later patches as well, how that how her attacks were balanced and how well they tracked. Although I'm not sure. Yeah, it's kind of a deceptively tricky fight this. It can really fuck you if you're not careful. Okay, I'm really feeling the greed now. I want to get her to that second phase. Right, we're going to try and greed it a bit here. Okay, here we go. Phase two. Yeah. Let's take it slow. <laughs> really cute animation. Ah! Oh, really? 
I thought I'd be out of range. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Let's not get greedy in the second phase. We'll clear out the spiders. We'll take it slow. I'm going to be greedy in that first phase, though. I can't help it. She is weak to bolt, not fire as well. Yeah, yeah, of course. Let's get that bolt paper out. I don't think my unupgraded tinnitus will will do the trick, will it? An unupgraded tinnitus? I might be able to bring it up to plus something. And um, okay. Ah, fuck it. We'll take we'll take this phase slow. We'll take the whole thing slow. Slow and meticulous all the way this time. If you, if you time that correctly, you can stagger her out of her teleportation and keep wailing on her. Nice and slow. I bet Dave is gonna fucking one shot wrong like an asshole. Go on, do your thing. Should have dealt more there. It's scary getting close to her, though.
just have to be patient. It's the hardest thing about this fight. Whoa! Oof, the quick follow up there. Do some other bullshit. There you go. Thank God. Kin Cold Blood. They've died a bunch of times on Dark Beast Parl. He probably fought him early though. I kind of cheesed Parl a bit by leaving him there for a while. <laughs> I'll take my victories where I can get them, though. Reaper, thank you for the tier 2 and the 17 months. Cheers. I'm um, Greg, did I thank you earlier for your 14 as well? Thank you. Let's take a look at uh, the, the Kin Cold Blood. This is the first time we get it, I think. Cold Blood of Inhuman Kin of the Cosmos. Brethren of the Great Ones. Used to gain unspeakable blood echoes. Love that. Dare not to delve into the world beyond humanity. The eldritch truth touched upon long ago at Bergenworth. We start off with cold blood dew. Used to gain blood echoes. Thick cold blood used to gain a larger amount of blood echoes. Frenzied cold blood used to gain frenzied blood echoes. Kin cold blood used to gain unspeakable blood echoes. There is still one other tier above kin cold blood as well. Maybe two. I think just one though. Okay, where is she? We come around to the front here. And look at her. I don't think we can actually see her face. Yeah, it looks like her. she's holding her hands up to her face as if she's crying. But I think she also has that covering. You know, her from her gown. It's covering her face as well, I think. Oh wait, no, I think you can see your face. No, you can't. The thing is covering it. And her and her hands are underneath it. Whatever you the veil, the veil, that's the word I was looking for. Yeah, the, the veil is covering her face and her hands are underneath the veil. Presumably holding her face.
Oh yeah, look, we can get quite close before the scene triggers as well. Wow, I didn't think we could get this close. Love the reflection as well. Yeah, you can see it quite clearly, actually. I didn't think you could get this close. Her hands aren't up to her face. But they're, uh, they're handcuffed as well, aren't they? Ritual secret broken. Seek the nightmare newborn. That baby that we just heard crying. So cool. Now ah, we can see that creature that was trying to grab us before. <laughs> Jesus, the amygdala are scary looking. The nails. Those little strands of hair sticking out. Oh my god. Giant monstrosities. Run. Back to Yahargul. Hope. That red moon and the sky drained of blood. Amazing. Behold, a pale blood sky. Yeah, now we see it. The idea that this was always here. This was here all along. We just couldn't see it. Rom hiding the ritual. Obscuring it. But I like the description for the Great One Cold Blood. Ooh, feel free to post it, yeah, because we probably won't get it in this playthrough. I don't think you find any of it in the main story. You really get the feeling now that all hell is broken loose. Something has been unleashed. Bad things are happening. <laughs> the amygdala just cover this place. One of them hanging off that building, another one down there. We can see the all the eyes coming out of that one as well. 
Oh my god. Oof. What a moment. Great one, Cold Blood. Used to gain cosmically nightmarish blood echoes. Yeah, I remember that term. Cosmically nightmarish. What a description. <laughs> Relic containing the blood echoes of a great one. Used to gain cosmically nightmarish blood echoes. Like a true revelation, this uncanny relic defies understanding. Light that lamp. I think this is something we notice here as well. That uh, we see a lot of these caged Mensa scholars, these dead Mensa scholars. And I think they're all facing towards the moon. We'll keep an eye out for all the other ones we find along the way, but I think. Everyone we find is facing towards the moon. Pale blood finally revealed. Yeah. What is it, the sky or the moon? Or is it both? Pale blood moon and a pale blood sky. cool how we get to see these statues that were once covered up as well be revealed. Remember down in the other part of Yahargul when we first get taken there? We see that statue that's all covered up and now we get to see what it's now we get to see the whole thing. Really cool going from unseen to seen. Really ties in with the whole idea of uncovering the ritual. But I don't think we can see any any of these statues that aren't covered up earlier on in the game. Nasty looking things. Look at that. Quote unquote statues. Chunk. A solid shard that forms in cold blood. After death, some substances crystallize, but most simply harden and form bloodstones. Same description. Just a chunk of them. Yeah, nothing different. There's also old Great One Cold Blood. Oh, I forgot about that. Cosmically nightmarish. The exact same description. I thought I remembered there being another path here, but that's probably further down. Um, let's go... Before we continue here... Let's go to Cathedral Ward, see how everyone's holding up. Yeah, that is a bit of a shame, Devin, especially if it's so rare and all the other ones have different descriptions. Forgot about the music. This isn't the only thing that changes the music as well. If your insight is high enough, the music will change. It's not just dependent on your progress. That sky is looking apocalyptic now. Welcome home, good hunter. What is it you desire? Good hunter, your presence somehow soothes. 
I sense the ancient echoes. They course your veins. Very well. Let the echoes become your strength. Let me stand close. Now shut your eyes. I'd imagine it's the same in Japanese, but maybe. A bit more vitality couldn't hurt. Farewell, good hunter. May you find your worth in the waking world. So good. <laughs> oh, hey. We already have Nitrous, though. Yeah, yeah. We can buy it now, though, ever since beating Carl. I just want to stay here and listen to this forever. Hey, what's up, Poop Master? Okay, Ariana isn't looking so good. Granny is perked up a bit, though. That's nice. We'll take our victories. Adela is very pleased. Oh yeah, the cry that we can hear now, the baby cry, just haunts every area. Church dweller, cheer me up, will you? Once the night of the hunt passes, suppose we could be friends? Give it a thought. Well, if you wouldn't mind. <laughs> Just the same shit. I have my share of woes. I'm going to ask the question again. If we say no, can I still tell her I have my share of woes? I can't. Uh, this one I'm not so confident about. But I'm assuming I can. I just don't remember if she has any different dialogue if you say no. I'm gonna say no. Oh, good. What a relief. You always were the brave one. 
you can't bottle up everything inside. You mustn't be afraid to share. <laughs> I don't remember that. What's wrong? Anything you'd like to tell me? Thanks, Granny. So grim, this part with Granny. Really uh, disturbing. You just feel bad for her by the end. here as well and just the echo the reverb it's like really really dark atmosphere the whole crew we have here you know <laughs> not the most cheerful bunch Sedatives. Two sedatives. And it's kind of funny. She gives you one first, then she gives you two the second time. Does she give us three the third time? Oh, what is it, dear? You in the <laughs> yeah, yeah. Keep on handing out those sedatives. Three sedatives. Yeah, I have all the all the woes. Now, now, have some patience. Mum will make everything better. <laughs> now, I think that's all we get from Adela. <laughs> yeah. The old man here is unfazed, I think. I don't think he ever starts to break down, does he? Ah, your life's been a web. But I see through your deceit. I did not learn from books. No, 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 no. I learned it all with my own mind. Love it. Forgot about that. No, 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 no. Insanity? Sorry, too sharp for that, bollocks. <laughs> ah, but I see, I, did, I learned it all with my own mind.
Okay, where else can we go? Back to the little girl's sister in central Yarnum. Maybe I'd be faster just running from here. Uh, back to the dream. I don't want to do Eileen yet. I'm going to save that for a while because that fight is rough. Gehrman should have new dialogue now when he appears out back whenever he decides to. Gilbert! Oh, Gilbert! Claw Mark. This was our Scottish friend. We can see he broke through the window here. He turned eventually. He thought he was above it as well, didn't he? He thought... He thought he was, uh... Invulnerable. We got the flamethrower, yeah. A carol rune that transcribes in human sounds. The claw mark is an impulse to seek the warmth of blood like a beast. It strengthens visceral attacks, one of the darker hunter techniques. Although the difference is subtle, Runesmith Carroll describes the beast as a horrific and unwelcome instinct deep within the hearts of men, while Claw Mark is an alluring invitation to accept this very nature. This really reminds me of the opening scene of the game when we see the where we have that vision of a wolf walking up to us putting its hand out as if offering something and then bursting into flames. And I think that's generally how people how people interpret that scene. That that's like symbolic of our own character's beastly nature in some way. It's quite an unusual scene. That moment where we fall asleep and then wake up, and that beast is there, coming out of the blood. The beast forming out of the blood. And I guess when it lights on fire, that's us maybe suppressing our own beasthood. That the beast is there, tempting us. Our own beastly nature tempting us, but we refuse, and it sets on fire. Like some symbolic representation of, of that. That's how I always looked at it anyway, or like something thereabouts. I think it might also be evoking the idea of overflowing scene in Sekiro, which is mentioned a few times in Bloodborne and Dark Souls. It's translated differently. Comes out of this stagnant blood comes out of this stagnant blood on the floor. The beast overflows out, okay. Have I eaten? Um, I ate before I started the stream, but I haven't eaten since then. I'll, um, I won't be going for too much longer tonight, so I'll make sure to eat after I stop the stream. <laughs> Thank you, Granny Storm. Um, okay, Mama Storm. second guys we 
Perhaps it sets on fire because the mes because the messengers chose me. That is that it's tied to the messengers in some way. Yeah, it is interesting. Like, why do we get chosen by the messengers? Is it, is it because of the blood ministration? A special type of blood ministration that some foreigners go through? Up until this point, we only know... The only dreamers we know are outsiders. Eileen, Jora, they were both like us and they are both outsiders. At least I think, anyway. Maybe there isn't anything to suggest that Jorah is an outsider. Maybe that's just something I assumed. And Eileen, given her accent as well. Maybe there isn't any text that implies she's of a foreign land. Maybe it was just the accent that made me think that. I don't know. More like we were chosen by Germen or the Moon Presence. You would think the Blood Ministration had to have been a part of it as well, though. That the Blood Ministration was necessary. It's interesting how that that blood the the Blood Ministration at the start of the game, like the the, the blood minister that services us in the clinic, like, he's he really sounds deceptive. You know? He really sounds manipulative with how he talks. Oh, yes, yes, yes. You don't need to think about it, you know? You may think it all just a bad dream. You know, he's, like, laughing to himself under his breath. Uh... And he tells us that, you know, if we need pale blood, we're in the right place. But first, we need to have this little blood ministration. First, you need to take this Yarnum blood. And then you'll be on your way. Then you can go on your way. Why is he so eager to give us this blood ministration? What does he get out of it? Why does he want us to be here joining the hunt? I think more than anything, Garman was looking for a hunter to stop the Mensis ritual. Right, that would make sense. The doll and Garman are both expecting you, and it's a lot like how Demon Souls works. She's a she is a foreigner. Those hunters always come from the outside. Yeah. Maybe he gets, maybe he's just looking to get paid, that guy? Yeah, I mean, maybe. <laughs> um, okay, let's go, let's go talk to the little girl. What do they pay him? Blood. Foul beast. Um, friendly Taco. I don't know if I'd refer to that as the true ending, but um, I don't think there is anything to suggest that as far as I know. It, I, I think it's hard to know what we, what our consciousness is when that happens. Do we still remember our past self? I don't know. Ah, you have 
him by any chance. See my little sister, have you? I told her to look after the house. But she's run off somewhere. She's still quite small. And wears a big white ribbon. Have you seen her out there anywhere? Oh. Okay then. But if you do see her, would you give me word? She's a small girl. With a big white ribbon. My good little sister. Oh. Back again. Any news of my sister? Oh. How did this happen? Why would she ever go outside? <laughs> At least. I'll have something to remember her by. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. She just wanted her sister's ribbon. She's wanted it for years. Always jealous that her sister got all the nice things. All the nice clothes. It's really peculiar how she's the only one that responds at this time as well. If you knock on all the other doors, everyone's turned or everyone's dead or... Yeah, it's just silence everywhere. She's the only one. But it gets worse if we reawaken and come back here. See if anything happens. No response. Oh. There's the little girl's sister. And we get the same ribbon, but she washed it. What's the description? White ribbon that messengers are oddly fond of. A ribbon made of fine lace that shines remarkably. More suited to pretty young girls than silly old messengers. <laughs> The messengers are better off with urns and head bandages. Yeah. 
The only place that's still open on the night of the hunt is the dry cleaner, so she went there to get it washed. That's, she was pretty quick about it. Man, what a grim story. Oh my god. Just completely hopeless from start to finish. Did she fall or get clubbed? Yeah, I don't know. I like to think she just jumped off and killed herself in a mad frenzy. You know, just to make it even worse. I feel like that would be suitable, you know, given the trajectory of this storyline and how insane it gets. I, I like that. The little girl, she went to wash the ribbon, wash the blood off the ribbon. Then she wore the ribbon, looked at herself in the mirror and went mad. Ran out the door, jumped off, smacked her head on the ground, dead. Why does this guy wait by this door? I don't think there's I don't think there's any uh, lore to that. Maybe he used to live here before he transformed or something. He could come up with some kind of head cannon. Man. One of Miyazaki's cruelest storylines, you know? Was it not enough that the girl lost her parents? Both of them left alone in the house? Then she gets eaten by a pig. Then she has a crazy deranged sister. We try to pay our respects by giving the sister's ribbon to her other sister. But the, uh, but the sister didn't give any fucks about the well-being of her poor sister who got eaten by the pig. And she ends up dying as well. <laughs> that is so rough. Oh my god. That ledge is a real health hazard. Oh! Okay, I think we might do one more thing before I wrap up for today. Whoop! Death to the minister! Death to the minister. That's a rare one, I think. Or maybe it's just weird to hear it so clearly like that. But yeah, at this point in the game, when the Blood Moon comes out, you get no reaction from any of the Arnimites in town. Just silence. Everyone's dead. Apart from one guy. And we're going to go to that guy right now. At least I think he's the only guy. Pretty sure he is. Do they all go insane and join the hunt? I'm not sure what they do.
Um, when we kill Rom, does that allow everyone to see the red moon? Is that what's happening? Where, like, all regular Yarnamites, they just can't handle the insight? The secret has been broken. The red moon is there for everyone to see, and everyone loses their mind. And everyone just frenzies. Their brains explode. Frenzy head explosion. Egads. Yeah, I think that's, that's how I see it as well. Hold on. Just a wee bit, my little dearie. Oh, okay. Granny's gone out to get me some more sedatives. Uh, oh, wrong place. I want to go to the workshop. Okay, so as far as I understand, this guy is the only guy in town that you'll get a reaction from at this time. Is it because he's under here and he can't see the moon? <laughs> when he looks out his window, there's no blood moon. Is that what's protecting him down here? If there's any kind of logic for it, I don't know. A great night of celebration. <laughs> <laughs> oh, amazing. Again. <laughs> A celebration. A great night of celebration. <laughs> Love it. All right, let's head back. He was waiting all this time for the ritual secret to be broken. Now he can celebrate. He knew what was coming. He was the only one who knew. He was prepared for this. Oh, man. The blood moon in the old workshop. Wow. Gorgeous. Something killed themselves.
Uh, yeah, yeah, cool, man. I've spoken about that before as well. Or I, I spoke about how it's one of the things that I really... Especially on my first playthrough. It was one of the things that I really enjoyed. That I kind of wasn't expecting. How every... Every new item description felt like the next paragraph in a book. Almost. Um... And that was one element of the game, I think, that really allowed me to get pulled into the world and the story. Because um, I remember playing Dark Souls for the first time. And, you know, you can go for hours in Dark Souls getting loads of new items without really getting anything too significant from those items, story-wise. You know, they'll just have, like, mechanical descriptions maybe like a brief little bit of lore or something but uh, in bloodborne when you play it it feels like every new item you get has something uh, significant you know it'll give you it'll give you something to chew on The writing itself is also just really evocative as well a lot of the time and it's like really written to to a theme. FromSoft gonna top this? Well, I mean, it depends on your taste as well, you know? Some people just don't like horror that much and they prefer medieval fantasy. So they're gonna prefer Dark Souls. But uh, Bloodborne is just so attuned to my tastes naturally as well, you know? I really like horror. Uh, but I love Souls as well, don't get me wrong. And I really, st I, Souls really grew on me as well, more and more, upon replaying it. When I first played Dark Souls, I, I was never really that into the world, or the, or the story that much, you know, compared to how I am now. But uh, Bloodborne just completely pulled me in. And that kind of made me go back and play Souls and try to dig into those games more. Um, because I knew they had a similar approach to world building and storytelling and everything. It just wasn't like completely my jam when I played it for the first time. But um, after playing Bloodborne, I definitely um, started to enjoy them more. Yeah, there is the whole argument as well as like, is Bloodborne even a horror game? Because mechanically, gameplay wise, it's not traditionally a horror. It's not mechanically, it's not traditionally what you would see in a horror game at all. It's an action RPG. Can an action RPG be a horror game? I mean, like to me, it's a it's an action RPG horror game. I would say I find it more disturbing than a lot of actual, true horror games. You know, like a, like a classic Resident Evil game or whatever. You know, the horror of Bloodborne really can be really disturbing, you know. It can get, it can get under your skin like a good psychological horror game. In the same way Silent Hill can, it's just different, you know, because it's presented as an action RPG. You don't, you don't have that survival horror tension, you know. You don't have that feeling of powerlessness or weakness, or you know, where your, or your character can't move all that well. You know, you don't have that survival. You don't have that same survival horror tension. But you know. There are some moments in this game, you know, stepping out into Yahar Ghoul for the first time. 
Like, that is just a, an amazing horror moment, getting taken away by the kidnappers and walking out and hearing the music and walking down to Sister Adela saying her prayers. Like, that is some dark horror. Stumbling upon a Briatus for the first time underneath the Grand Cathedral. Like, amazing Lovecraftian horror. Seeing the red moon appear for the first time and all the all the bloody uh, Yarnamites appearing out of the ground. The, seeing the Amygdala on the church. Like, that's amazing horror. <clears throat> but yeah, it's different. With Bloodborne versus Dark Souls, what I like is that Bloodborne feels like a very vertical story. It continuously builds on itself, but DS feels more horizontal. That's that's one way of putting it. One isn't objectively better than the other, but I find the, the vertical approach more appealing personally. Yeah, I think me too. Although I definitely found Souls... Yeah, Souls definitely got a lot more interesting to me as I replayed it. I really like them both. It's quite clearly a gothic horror game. Yeah, well, gothic slash Lovecraftian. Gothic on the surf, gothic on the surface, Lovecraftian under the surface. I guess I guess I love crafty and horror can also be a gothic horror. Yeah, right, Storm. <laughs> I guess I just don't really think of it that way. You know, gothic horrors like vampires, werewolves, Dracula, and all that stuff. And love crafty, and I'm thinking like the cosmos and the the, the sea creatures and Cthulhu and. All that stuff. Madness. But yeah, I guess they're, they're, you could say they're both one and the same. Lovecraft is cosmic horror, yeah. But yeah, the way the two blend together in this is really something. Yeah, the aesthetics and the sanguine themes are very classic gothic, and then the underlying motives are, of course, Lovecraftian. And and of, like some of the designs and the aesthetic are very cosmic horror as well, but they're more aspects that are sprinkled in, you know, like the, the boss designs, some of the enemy designs. But the environment and the setting is uh, primarily gothic. And like the overall aesthetic. And you have those Lovecraftian bits sprinkled in that get more and more intense as you get further in. Although I guess like the dreamlands and stuff like that would make you feel like it's would feel more cosmic. You know, when you're in the hunter's dream or when you're in the nightmare of Mensis or the frontier. And that's the environmentally, in terms of the setting, it's definitely stepping away from gothic horror there. Fucking definitions can suck my balls anyway. Who gives a shit? <laughs> uh, I'm going to dress up my little boys here. Here, have some urns. My little messengers. I think it's good to be able to categorize things so you can more easily talk about stuff, but sometimes you're just like, oh, fuck it, who gives a shit? 
You really need you really need to be so precise about what is and what isn't whatever the fuck. <laughs> um okay, where am I going? I think I might wrap it up here for now. Um I think this might be a good place to stop. We can go through Yahargul, start off at the beginning of Yahargul Part 2 next time, make our way down to the One Reborn, kill the One Reborn, then go head off to the other part of Bergenworth College in the Nightmare, then the Nightmare Frontier, then maybe we could do Kanehurst after the Nightmare Frontier. And then the DLC. Oh, hold up. We could do one more thing. We can go back to fake Yusefka now, can't we? Fake Yusefka should be uh, having a jolly old time with uh, Mr. Erden. One more thing. All right. We're cool to do this now, yeah? Once the blood moon comes up, fake you, Sefka. Is getting impregnated. If that's what's happening. Because her brain is having a wild old time as well. Whether she's being impregnated as well, I don't know. She does drop the earth and rune, doesn't she? I thought I remember there being a note here. My analog sticks are have a mind of their own at the moment. Hold on, let me just move them around. I'm not a fan of the pregnancy thing. She drops the same Erden rune as Adela, who's definitely not impregnated. Right, yeah, I mean, you don't really get the sense that she's Un that she's the same as, like, undergoing the same process as Ariana. And it's, her, her issue seems to be more what's going on in her head, you know? She's talking about how she can see things and her head's twitching and stuff. It doesn't really feel like she is impregnated. Here she is. Disturbing seeing this. Oh. Look at her hand. God, I'm nauseous. Have you found this? It's progressing. I can see things. I knew it. I'm different. I'm no beast. I... Oh, God, it feels awful. But... It proves that I'm chosen. Don't you see... How they writhe... Writhe inside my head. It's rather... Rapturous. Uh... So what did she do? She's She spends the whole game experimenting on subjects, if you choose to do that. Turning them into celestial emissaries. 
And now she's trying to transform herself. Who knows what she did. Trying to turn into a great one somehow. Who knows how she... What she did exactly. Doesn't look like it's going so well though. <laughs> it's rather rapturous. And we don't see anything from here, do we? Like, if we leave her here and come back at the end, she isn't a celestial emissary or anything, is she? I don't think. This is, this is the end of her story. If we kill her now, we get a rune from her. That's what we're going to do. Um... There we go. Oh, no, she drops a third umbilical cord. Right, right, right. Damn, I forgot about that. A great relic, also known as the Cord of the Eye. Every infant great one has this precursor to the umbilical cord. Provost Willem sought the cord in, or in order to elevate his being and thoughts to those of a great one by lining his brain with eyes. The only choice he knew if man were to ever match their greatness. Did Willem ever get his hands on one of these, I wonder? He was looking pretty elevated earlier on. By lining his brain with eyes. We need to collect three of these if we want to become a great one. You can find four total in the game, but you only need three in order to get that ending where you become a great one yourself. Where we achieve what Willem wanted to achieve. So I guess that's what happens. You take three of these and your brain gets lined with eyes. Who's knocking up these chicks? I don't think she was getting knocked up. But, uh, Erden is the invisible great one who's lurking around these parts. Knocking up other chicks. We'll see his handiwork later on. We'll see one of his babies later on. The cords prevent moon the moon presence from doing something to you. I think they prevent the moon presence from being able to shackle you. I think that's what happens there. If you take the cords, the moon presence realizes that you are becoming one of them and you cannot be controlled and you cannot be made to be the new caretaker of the hunter's dream. At least that's how I uh, look at that scene, you know, where you're like coddled like a child. The moon presence wants you as a surrogate child. German right now is the, is the surrogate child of the moon presence. And you can be the new surrogate if you wish and take over as the new caretaker. But if you take the three cords and become a great one... Moon Presence doesn't want anything to do with you. She'll she'll try and take you down. I think that is the general interpretation for that as well. For like how those scenes play out at the end. But there are probably other ways you can look at it as well. I don't know. Yeah, maybe looking at... Maybe the surrogate child idea isn't... 
on the money, but I do think it is interesting how Moon Presence seems to like coddle you like a child, right? I think that is the intention of the way she, the Moon Presence holds you in that scene, you know, and kind of coddles you. It's what it looks like to me, anyway. Like you're kind of being coddled. Um, but I don't know. Maybe the surrogate child idea does work as well. I don't know. I think she's trying to drain you of blood, but when you have the cords, she can't. Okay, that's interesting. Garman likely isn't a surrogate child as he's never assisted to ascension, but he's under its thrall. Yeah, I mean, like, to be a surrogate child, do you have to be a great one? Can a, do, do, can a great one accept a human as a surrogate child? Man, I don't know, and I guess obviously there's the, uh, the the doll who it's quite overt with how the doll cradles you as a child when you become a great one, when you become that infant great one. <laughs> well, I love this fucking game. I'm glad I still like it so much. So good. In the cut content, in the cut content, Garman talks to you about f about how Flora will descend from the moon and consume the victor after the final fight. I think that still happens. They they just don't talk about it. Okay. So that 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 was another indication that Flora is the moon presence. That was the theory, just based off the doll's dialogue. You know that really rare dialogue you can get with the doll where she says, "Oh, Flora of the moon." And Flora is written in caps. Or the, uh, you know, the F is in caps. As if it's a person or someone, something of real great significance. I think I've only heard that dialogue a couple of times. It's so hard to get. Okay, I think we might leave it there. Let me teleport back to the dream. That was a fun stream, though. We made some good progress. Just scrolling up here. Okay. Uh, let me just check for Garman one more time. All right, guys, we'll leave it there. That was some good progress. Big chunk of stuff got done today. Started the stream with a chalice dungeon. It was nice to fit in one of those in the playthrough. Got through all of the Forbidden Woods. Rom. Some other bits and pieces, little quest lines wrapped up. And still quite a bit to go. 
but we have a few days before Elden Ring comes out. We'll definitely get it all finished before then. I'll probably be back on tomorrow with another session around this length, I would say. Eight and a half hours. Yeah, we might do another eight hour session tomorrow. Depending uh, depending on how I feel. We'll see what happens. Um, let me just check my Streamlabs one more time. Um, Reaper, I hope I thanked you for your tier two earlier. The 17 months. Uh, thank you. Greg again with the 14. Cheers, everyone. Thanks for being here. And I'll, uh, I'll see you all soon. Let me just see. Is Dave still on? Dave is playing Bloodborne. So I'm going to host up Dave. And yeah, go watch him play, play some Bloodborne if you like. He's doing the same thing as me. Slow, in-depth story playthrough. Reading all the descriptions. Talking some lore. Doing some shit. So uh, go check out Dave's stream if you like. That's probably where I'm going to chill for the next hour or so until he wraps up, probably. I'm going to go get some food. Take it easy. Yeah. Till next time, everyone. Have a good one. Peace.